But every time I think of you, I always hear Sherry Dennis. Boy, I trust you and all that I've been here before you. You remind me of pain. Yeah, I was watching you. You're good. Oh, you have thank very you. good stage presence and everything. Oh, 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 oh. it is honestly such an honor to speak to you um making the band is one of my favorite reality tv shows of all time oh. i consistently watch that show every day that it came on um yeah definitely the Danny kane era um i caught the tail end of the previous group's era so like i didn't watch in real time the making of that band, I caught when once they were already like a thing. And yeah. then, of course, we know they ended up being disbanded by Diddy, and then they restarted their search for an all-girl group, which is when right. I was like front row and center watching it every week. So what? I watched oh. your, yes, I watched your progression on MTV over the years. And yes. I grew up rooting for the Black girl, you know? Yeah. We not racist, but we gonna root for the people that look like us. And we so- know go for what's ours why not yeah and so i just remember being drawn to you because you were the chocolate girl on the show that was yeah. you know doing her thing and that was that that was in there oh right. then of course you made it to the end you went to the next season i say all that to say it is an honor to speak to you like thank you i'm just happy that people still remember me from that you know and it's it's an honor to be remembered to be honest i mean when you got eliminated, I remember you said, Don't forget the Laker. Don't forget the Laker. Uh huh. Crazy. Okay, so before we jump into talking about you being on this iconic reality TV show, talk to us about where Malika was before we saw her on MTV. Before I was on MTV, like I was popular already in Oakland. Um, we had a group, I had a group called Oak Town Girls back in the day. Take it all the way back. My family is a very uh, musical family. So my dad is a singer. He was signed to Columbia back in the day. They toured and my mom's a professional African dancer. Plus she used to do plays. So I grew up in that family. You know, every day we were at a rehearsal or at a gym or practice or something so this is just what I was raised around and so I think I just got the bug but my dad used to work for Bill Graham that's like the big promoter back in the day and he used to take us to all the concerts and we would be backstage I mean they better be happy they didn't have Twitter and all of this stuff back in the day because baby we okay. were everywhere we would have been shade room shade rumors but that's how we started the group just being inspired from my dad taking us to all of the concerts and plus being around in the family and right away our group would just took off like we used to win like all the talent shows and we did a lot back in the day there was this um show called home turf which was like the equivalent of maybe like a 106 in park okay or something like that like in the bay area so we did a lot a lot of stuff i feel like one of my proudest moments is that we used to all practice at this place called the yahoo house and tupac was a part of that crew. So I've actually performed on the same stage with Tupac before, but again, we didn't have cameras and, you know, access like we did now. Somebody has that video and I will pay top dollar for that. So yeah, I mean, I've done a lot. Like prior to that, I, I was everywhere. I had a, a CD. When I got on the show, I had already put out a CD. I had already won like Rough Riders, West Coast competition. I won that. Wow. It's a lot of things like, when you see people get to a point prior to that, it's a lot that takes place. So, you know, I was modeling, acting, I've done like commercials and things like that before making the band. I actually auditioned for the first making the band, but I didn't even realize that it, that I was auditioning for that because I had a manager at the time that just was like, we're, we was doing so much that it was just another audition. And I obviously didn't make the cut for that one, but 
I was doing a lot before making the band. So by the time I got there, I was like, woo child, y'all got to take me in. Baby, because <laughs> I had already put in a lot of work coming from Oakland, California and just doing my thing. Remember Missy Elliott's show back in the day? She had a reality show. That feels familiar. Baby, don't be forgetting Missy Elliott. At that year, when I did make in the band, I had made it to like the top 75 for Missy's show. Um, the week that Making the Band premiered, I was Jet Beauty of the Week. It came out all in the same week, ironically. So I was doing a lot. I, I'm that girl that just was like doing the most. You know how it is doing doing your music and, and getting yourself out there. You just everywhere. You just wanna you just wanna put yourself out there and see what opportunity comes your way, you know? Yes. Things Absolutely. don't things don't come to people if you just sitting at home waiting for it to be dropped in your lap. No, you got to get out there and go get it. Oh no, yeah, no, we were we were doing it big. Shout out Soul B Bong Show. That that was like a really big thing in Oakland. Our group used to win that, so we were like really town Oakland celebrities in our own right. And at the time, we were rapping. There were no girl rappers really out at that time. So you were rapping. That's really what I do. I don't really sing. When I when I found out that Diddy was making the band for a girl group, I was like, <clears throat> all right, my confidence was there, but I never, to this day, I don't really consider myself a singer. I'm a rapper that can sing. Is it too like, much for is it too much for me to ask for maybe not a 16, but like an eight? Even a four. A four, yes. I, mean, I sent you this. I'll just give you a a from my recent song called African Girl. I touched down in the motherland. So honored, soil of the original mother and father, son and daughter. I'm so unbothered, denying everything that the slave master taught us. My people the raw is black skin flawless. First to do with all the original ballers. What? Original scholars, original people is really what you should call us. It just goes on, but that's my, yeah. So African girl, but yeah, it's I have a lot, baby. I have a lot of raps. Some that I'm like, Ooh, did I say that? <laughs> yeah, and you girl. did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, you go Google some of my other stuff. And remember what I said? Google me. Mm -hmm. That's when Google first came out. Everybody thought that was like so genius for me to say that. And a lot of people did Google me, but some of my old stuff is really I think you caught that live with me and my daughter where I'm just a little disappointed in the state of girl hip-hop now but yeah i did it too so i don't want to knock them too hard because baby if you go dig up some of my old stuff you'd be like oh child beep 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 <laughs> yes no i live um and so how did you find out about this particular audition for this season of making the band was it through your agent and manager so probably somebody told me about it because at that time I was just doing so much that it was, mm -hmm. oh, this, Diddy is doing this. And, you know, so when they told me about it, I was like thinking it was going to be like making a band with the rap thing again. And I remember going to look at it on the internet and um, it said for singing. And I was like, oh, shit, for singing. Ooh. All right. I mean, I'll apply. I'll give it a shot. And I just took it from there. But fun fact. I went to LA for the first audition and mm -hmm. I didn't make it at all. The first audition was basically just based on your look. And, and as you know, usually when you audition, people don't get to watch you audition. Like usually auditions are behind closed doors, yada, yada, yada. So I came up singing um, Erica Badu, Better Call Tyrone. I remember they had like a list of songs for you to choose from. And I, I thought I killed it. You know, I was looking cute. I had my little ponytail. I was giving what I needed to give. And they didn't even pick me at all. And I was like, well, what did I do? You know, they asked me to sing this song or they gave you the list of songs to sing. And so I just stood there and I watched for like three hours because I just felt like I killed the audition. Why didn't I make it? And come to find out, they were Diddy was looking for like a pop group, like Spice Girls type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I went and did more research on it. I went home. I was disappointed because, I mean, at this point, I was grinding hard. And I drove like six hours for the audition and all that. And then I found out that the next audition was in Miami. And like in two days. And I really didn't have the money to get there, to be honest, in the next two days. And so put it all together to get the money and then 
that's how it went. So they were like, wait a minute, didn't we see you in LA? But then when I showed up, I know you said the wigs. <laughs> Baby, I put on my blonde wig. I had on my trucker's hat. I had the studded out belt, the studded out wristband. You know, I had on my little Doja and Gabbana's with the, I just gave like that retro trucker, you know, urban mm -hmm. outfitter look. I didn't give that sister girl look that I had because I understood what he was looking for. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing as an artist, make sure you know what somebody is looking for because I just showed up doing my thing and it's so different now from those times. So I'm happy it kind of happened the way it did, but baby, I, I had to earn that spot for sure. This goes into my first question that I had. Um, so the season starts with the final 19 girls already in the house. We yeah. hear Johnny Wright say that Diddy did not like anyone. I want to know what happened in the audition process leading up to what we saw on the screen. And was there a 20th girl? Because I thought the number 19 was just so odd to be like a final group of girls. I I thought it was 22. You might be telling me some new tea. I think we started off with 20. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I don't really like none of this shit. Who of these 19 girls deserves to stay in the house and who doesn't have what it takes? A lot of you guys are here by the skin of your teeth and because we fought for you, Puff didn't really like anybody. It was very strenuous, to be honest. Mm -hmm. First of all, for me going to LA, not making it, to then going to Miami, then when you get to my got to Miami, it just kept it's like it was like two hundred and fifty thousand girls nationwide from the beginning that oh wow right so then in Miami it was a two day process so it looked like it looked like Coachella out there or something how many girls were trying to audition and it just kept dwindling down and dwindling down it'd be like fifty girls get cut a hundred girls get cut. More then it just kept going down to a lower number. So by the time we were in Miami, it ended up being like maybe 18 or something like that. Or whoever was left, we all went to Miami, um, to New York. So it probably wasn't 18. But that was very strenuous. And if you remember my girl Eileen, I love her so much because she she was just a pie from the beginning. She was helping me out a lot in Miami um with the dancing because that was, you know, that was kind of my soft point on the dance. And I had to practice a little bit more once I get that thing known when I thug it out so that was that and then when you got to New York it was a lot it was a lot every time you went it was like you were on edge from beginning to end because you never knew what day was what, what moment in time was going to be a goodbye for you um and when we got to New York I was just like oh my god and finally when we got to New York I feel like we had went through a year of auditions already and that was just to get into the house to see Diddy. And then once we were in the house, that then that's when that's when it all started. <laughs> oh my god. But it was a really, it was a lot. Which I could imagine just, you know, knowing Diddy just through the show and how much he wanted like the best, and he wanted the best to be sent through these very rigorous challenges to see who's yes. gonna come out on top. I can only imagine how hard it really was. Yes. Um, we didn't see much of you in the beginning when you guys were doing the first set of practices with Lorian, Johnny, and Doc. What was the beginning like for you? The beginning was just a mystery because you just never knew what was going to happen. It was a lot of excitement. Um, imagine like going from not being in the house to now you're got a shot at working with P. Diddy. So just like the reality of it all, like just just being amazed that you even were in that position, that was a lot going on. And just for me, I had already did a lot of training on waking up and practicing and being prepared for this moment. Um, but every day it was just like you never knew what was going to happen. Like you just never knew what was going to happen every single day. Like that's that you just lived on edge. How was that for your mental? Like, for me, I feel like I'm a strong person. You know what I mean? A lot of the girls was breaking down a lot. And to be honest, Diddy, I feel, was he wasn't there a lot for us in the beginning. We were really close with Lorianne. I don't know what he had going on in that moment in time, but he wasn't like, I felt like we did a lot of waiting. We did a lot of like, what, what's going on now? You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing? Mm. Like, what's for real going on? And now the way they do reality shows is totally different. Like, when we were there, 
cameraman was there 24 seven. So if you were, anytime that you were speaking, there was going to be a camera in your face. It wasn't no setup scenes. It wasn't no rehearsed. It wasn't nothing. It was all real. It was a really a reality show. Like the camera crew was um, staying in an apartment, like on the next side. So we started going like, because we <laughs> wanted to have a little bit of privacy, you know, and if you get up, you talk on the phone, if you go eat, they're going to be there no matter what you do. So that was kind of crazy getting used to always having the camera in your face. Like if you're talking, the camera's in your face. But in hindsight, the way they have all these reality shows now, imagine how much editing that would be to sit up and follow people all day long. You know, they've narrowed it down now, but it was, I like that because it was just real. I'm happy to be a part of something that was like the beginning of, this was that was a true reality show. It was all reality. Yeah. Um, I'm the reality shows I've done, of course, are in the new age. And yes, girl, like everything is planned out. You know, you get briefs, they stop you while you're filming and give you um what they call um beats and things like that. And I think that's honestly because of in the past they had to sort through so much footage and now kind of introducing some type of structure helps cut down on that amount of time and of course money it takes to edit and produce a final product called yeah. a reality and TV have a show whole crew sitting there following you around 24 hours out the day was that cost that cost yeah. yeah yeah um before we get too far off into the questions for the episodes i want to do something that the people love over here which is roll call right and this is okay. the making the van roll call where I name a lot of the important players who were on the show during your time. And you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your brain, whether it is good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. You can say a behind the scenes story, a favorite memory, your feelings, whatever. Malika, are you ready? I'm ready, baby. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so the first name I'm going to throw your way is Andrea. What comes to your mind when you hear the name Andrea? I would say Andrea was very mysterious. She was a sweet girl. My my term is pie. I call people that I like. She was a pie. She was a pie. Um, if you've seen like the part, I never had picked her to be in my band. We ended up kind of like by default getting closer after Diddy picked all three of us. But I feel like Andrea was just to herself. She was, she was real for the most part, I think. Yeah. She was just... I don't want to say she wasn't nothing, but I just felt like she never was in my band. I never really seen her like that. She sang good and everything, but she was she was a sweet little girl. She <laughs> was small compared to the rest she, of you guys. Like she, she like really she looked like a baby. Yeah. She was very little in person. Um, next on the list is Shannon. So you met Shannon your second season on the show. Um overrated i think shannon she was cool she was very quiet kind of boring to me um but good she could dance good but she was there's nothing special to me about her you know when i of course watched the season to prepare for this yeah. um and i was just picking of course we know what has happened who the band eventually was yeah. i kept seeing diddy refer to Shannon as like the sleeper or she's the one that's in the cut or she's the one yeah. you know who's always doing well um yeah. <laughs> you said she was overrated she I feel like she could dance really good she mm -hmm. sang good enough she was no problem she's a person that would be good to have in a group that's not gonna say too much not gonna shake up too too she's I like I like you know energy and vibes and craziness and she wasn't that to me. She was just like oh after they made the band, people would come up to me all the time and still people. I was more popular till after they gained the popularity. People still didn't even know like a lot of who the girls was because they was just I don't know. Sips tea. <laughs> In my opinion, um. And looking at the show now, I feel like those seasons where they were forming the band and trying to see who was going to make it, I feel like the story relied more on the girls who eventually did not make the band and not yeah. so much on the girls who did make the band. Like, right. I feel like, you know, like people like Dominique, people like Malika, people like Taquita, people like yeah. um, Levante, who we're going to talk about soon. I feel like, like those people were more 
get, they were given the spotlight more in yes. terms of driving the narrative and the story and the drama and the entertainment, while the girls who actually made it, like Dawn, um, D Woods, and Shannon, they didn't really participate in like the story of the reality TV show. Does right. that make sense? It's true because I feel like it wasn't really a storyline. Like how you see they have these reality shows and they make it a storyline. The storyline was we was trying to make the band. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really, it wasn't a storyline besides the fact that we was trying to make the band. So if you stood out, you stood out. If you didn't, you didn't. But at the end of the day, if you got the step and you could sing right and do your harmonies and all that, then you made the band. It was yeah. a, really a reality show for what yes. it was. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just said her name, so let's get into it. Levante. Levante was Levante came from Atlanta. She was a part of the two girls, I believe, that Diddy um sent the team out to go look for to add to the girls that were already there to get into the bed. And she came in not only with an amazing voice, but a very um, how do I want to describe a very spicy personality where she got into it a lot. Including yourself, what are your thoughts on Levante years I later? Think, I thought at that point, okay, they're trying to make a reality show. They're trying to get with this storyline. Like, this girl cannot be real. Like, I just thought that this, I was just like, it's, are y'all for real? Because I know Diddy was like, I don't want none of that fighting and all of this stuff going on. Because at one point in time, I was just like, I want to pop her. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to hit her. And I just felt like, I thought it was I thought it was fake. I thought it was like they that they put her in there as a a you know like a plot twist. And working with her was horrible. I I and like to this day it was just like I couldn't believe how like ungrateful she was. Just <laughs> everything was a problem. She just didn't keep it real. It was it was un, to me still I'm like I still don't know if she was a decoy. Honestly. It was it was a mess. Were there any instances that you know about or even feel like were ploys or, you know, made up situations by production to add entertainment value to the show? Mm -mm. Not Well, Jason, the diva, maybe that could have been a little... Diva! Yeah. Diva! So, rest in peace, Jason. Uh, not really. That's what I really appreciate about the show is that I feel like I was a part of a reality show with substance. Like mm. we were really there for a purpose. We worked with Doc Holliday. We worked with Lorianne Gibson. Like this was not just low vibrational, I don't know what's going on. Like a lot of the shows now, don't get me wrong. I'd be like, let's time for the low vibrational shows. And I don't know what I'm watching because it's just what's going on here. But that's yeah. why I kind of do feel, not kind of, I do feel like proud of being a part of that because it was actually us trying to make a band like in real life and then the real drama that just came along with the people that showed up <laughs> let's get into jason of course yeah. god bless the dead he has of course since transition which i didn't know about i found that out because i just so happened to follow nikki gilbert and i don't know how i ended up on her page or seeing her post about it but she posted about him like in 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 remembrance of him and honoring yeah. him and i was like Oh my God, he was actually like a well-known creative in the entertainment business. What do you remember about? Oh, uh, <laughs> what do you remember about? Damn, Jason. Jason when he first came again. I did not know. Like every day, you were on pins and needles, not knowing what was a test, what was you know going to get you taken off the show. And so when he came, I was thinking, "Is this?" I just kept. I didn't trust nothing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But. He was from Oakland. So that was kind of oh. our little bond and connection. And thank God he never like tried to punk me or come at me sideways or nothing like that. Like he would actually come to me and be like, am I, you know, I kind of stayed out of the way with Jason. I never had to <laughs> just a bug with him. And it was funny on like when the blogs first started, I said, well, he got hella bags. It don't look like he ain't going nowhere. So we just got to deal with it. But he had it in for Aubrey. He had it in for for andrea and now that i look back i feel like he was i feel like as a man he was jealous of them i really do really yeah especially aubrey you know because she was like the it girl and he just and she didn't let him break her down so i don't know when you was doing your 
video recaps, did you see like the strength that she kept up with him by not letting mm -hmm. him and allowing him to punk her because he was literally breaking the girls down. But when Diddy came back and got wind of it, he put him out. Because <laughs> I was like, me and Lorianne was hella cool. I told her, I said, girl, girl we got to talk. Because because they were all like on a break or something. And then when they came back, I was like, girl, she was like, what? You gotta tell me, T. And he was gone. Just like that. Just like that. Next on the list is D. Woods. Um, D Woods is very talented. I didn't really ever like truly get like close to her. She was cool. Like to me, she was like a homegirl, like somebody that I would probably kick it with outside of any mm -hmm. of this that we do. Um, we never really like by the time they came, honestly, I was just like, look, did he start like doing weird shit like oh, we're about to be working at the restaurant and, you know, serving wine. Like, it started turning into, like, did, did they never show this on Making the Band? I'm about to say, like, they never showed this. Tell me yeah. more. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I didn't come here to work at Justin's. I'm not about to learn no wine menu when I'm trying to learn a dance step. It never ended up happening, but I had a whole fit in a whole tantrum, and I just knew that they would show it. But... I felt like once the new girls came, a lot of it, it started changing. I feel like people started getting more into like reality show of it all. Cause we was looking a mess. Like when I was looking back, like we weren't like y'all, these new reality shows, their makeup is done and they're all, we were really like not tripping. But I think once we seen how of a mess we was this <laughs> second time around, everybody started looking better. So I feel like when D Woods and all of them came, it started, that's when it kind of started graduating into a little bit more of, I don't want to say fake, but just, I don't know. But D Woods was cool. I don't have nothing, you know, really, me and her didn't really link up like that, but I think she was cool. I think she was talented. I mean, she took my damn place. It's her or Don. Do you think, you know what? I ain't gonna say that. So, you know, we're we gonna keep it real. We're gonna have some fun. So I was, wa of course, watching it. And I was like, I think D Woods and Dawn, in their mind, was like the better version of Malika. Because to me, I feel like with them moving Aubrey and Shannon, not, I'm sorry, with them moving Aubrey and Andrea forward, Mm -hmm. And then keeping them, I feel like Diddy knew I want these two, I want them in the group, right? Yeah. We gonna we gonna keep Malika because she didn't came through in the clutch, which which we gonna get into all the stuff we talk about. We gonna, we gonna get into, yeah. but she didn't came through in the clutch like she done glowed up. She done got her head done, her body looking good. Like Mama done came through in the clutch, so right. we gonna keep her. I honestly don't think the intention was to necessarily keep you until the end as like one yeah. of the final group members, but I think they wanted to see one, how do these three, these two, potentially Malika, now interact with all these other girls that we've truly, truly vetted and really sent through the wire to be a part of this process? How do they interact? And I think once they saw people like D Woods and um Dawn, they were like, okay, we can sub Malika out and yes. put them in that, you know, and I'm just going to be real, that black girl, you know, that That's urban feel. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And they were more brown skinned than me, too. Like, if you're going to have a black girl in there, you got to probably make her a little more brown. I feel like all of that was put into consideration, too. I'm like, hell of light. I'm black, but I'm light. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So... But Don is down. You know what I mean? I can't, like, I don't have that. If anybody was going to take me out, I would probably say that's the one who did it. You know what I'm saying? Let's like, talk about I'm Don. Saying, yeah, Don or D Woods, but more so Don. Like, I still follow Don a lot. Like, I love her. Like, if I'm like, if that is the person that beat me out, I'll take that. Because she's, like, I would have been so disappointed if it would have just been, like, no shade, but, like, um, what's her name? Can't even remember her damn name. Um, describe her, describe her. She seemed really good. She came Dominique. 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, for real, because I feel like Diddy honestly never really got a chance to see my true performance, mm. my true shine. 
when the girl when the new second season came around he was more into it he was showing up more he wasn't really there for us Lorianne knew us more than Diddy knew us to be honest but I think mm. that second time around he was more hands on mm -hmm. and I feel like he still I don't want to say made a mistake but he definitely could have made a band with with the people he had I don't know if you follow Francesca she doing her thing Eileen's doing her thing like we would have been a good band and we probably would have still been together you think so yeah I do because we're all still band. cool we're all when you get off of this, I should have sent you Cheska. She got songs with Pitbull, all of them now. She doing her thing, baby. You might want to try to get her on the show. Eileen, they're doing the Eileen. The Spanish, you know, that would have mm -hmm. been nice to have it in the group. And Myla, she's still doing her thing. Myla, I had said I'm choosing between Myla and Francesca, and I'm leaning towards Francesca, but when we hang up, you go find out Francesca and see how we would have all been in a group. It got too catty with all the rest of them. All of us really was hella cool with each other, for real. Before I continue on with Roll Call, I want to get into this little Easter egg you dropped us about this deleted unseen of, you know, this deleted scene of you guys potentially doing a challenge where you guys had to work out a restaurant. Can you tell me more about that? Baby, that was it. So they were just doing a lot of different things and they took us to Justin's or whatever restaurant Diddy had in New York. And we were there and they were like, some people might have to clean the toilet and, you know, here's the wine list. Y'all need to remember all the wines in the restaurant and some of y'all going to be working and here's like a challenge. And I'm just like, I'm not because now that's where y'all got me messed up. I'm wrong. I didn't come here for that. Like, I didn't come here for none of that. And I remember the producers taking me to the side and just doing a confessional on the spot. I said, oh, my God, they're going to show me talking all of this mess. And I was, like, nervous. But it never did come to fruition, though. It was just one day of pure hell of us thinking that we have to work and people, like, studying, like, this extensive list of wines and all of this stuff is just, to me, was taken away from what we really were there for. And I was yeah. just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not working at the restaurant. I'm just not. And thank God it didn't get to that because I was so against it that I, I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> but I was just like, I'm not cleaning up a toilet. I'm not learning no lines. I'm not doing none of that. I, I worked at Sizzler before I came here. <laughs> Maybe that was their way of recreating that iconic moment where Diddy had the previous group walk across New York City to go get him some cheesecake. Yeah. Well, we did have an iconic moment the day I got cut. Remember when he made us run mm -hmm. for like six miles? I, have, I haven't done anything as crazy and gut-wrenching since that day. That, that still stands to this day as one of like the toughest moments in my life. Oh, wow. To be honest. That was crazy. Um, okay. Next on the list is Making the Band's It Girl Aubrey. Mm, fake. Um, intelligent. Um, do whatever it takes to get there. Um, a face for a face. Um, not what you think it was type of person. Like, I thought that me and Aubrey was really, really cool. Cause I'm a true friend, you know what I'm saying? But come to find out she's kind of fake. Like some of the, I mean, in the industry people are, I've never been like that person to get along, to keep going or be this way or be that way. I just never been that way, which is probably why I'm still where I'm at. Cause I don't do that. Um, and we were so cool, but she just, she just kind of flipped the script. She flipped the script and just really became hell of fake basically. What makes you say that? I was not expecting you to say that. Really? No. Um, and of course, we're in the roll call moment. But one of my questions later on was going to be, how was it having Ari help you during some of, you know, your final days with the dance where it's like a scene of you guys in the studio, just you two one-on-one, -on -one, and she's basically like coaching you through the new dance steps that Lori I loved her. That's what I'm saying. We were so cool on the show. And... As things kept prog progressing, she was turning into somebody else. I stayed the same. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm. I think what did it for me one day, 
And baby, I'm just giving it to you right now. We I are appreciate going to, it. Was it Paris Hilton? Or Nikki, what's the girl Paris Hilton used to be with? Nicole Richie. Nicole Richie. We was going to her house. Oh. And um, just to like hang out or whatever, you know. But was, I, this after, was this after you had been eliminated? This is after I had been eliminated. Oh. We were still kind of kicking it and stuff. And, oh. and I think that's what it is. Like she just, I mean, and maybe she got into the Hollywood limelight, but to me, I just, I don't know. I'm just not that that type of person. I'm just the same. I, I never, anybody that know me from high school be like, girl, you're still the same. Um, but she said to me, and this really stuck with me, we outside the door. Now, mind you, just to give you a little up to speed, before I did, um, uh, before I did making a band, I had already dated celebrities. I already won the Rough Rider competition. Like I already was kind of in that little limelight. I was already kind of like used to being around celebrities that I wasn't like when I saw celebrities. Mm -hmm. So she's like outside the door, baby. She called herself prepping me. So when you get in here, make sure, you know, like you act like you've been around these type of people before. Like, don't be, I said, girl, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to, honey? And I looked, I never forget, no shade to Nicole Richie. Her door number was like hanging upside down. Like her <laughs> condo door number was, but I'm like, I know you ain't trying to, look at her door. Like, sis, I've done things are like, just kind of like, you know, you're just this little, like you've never been around type of thing and make sure when you get in here you're acting a certain way girl i got in there i was me and they was loving me more than they was even paying attention to her because i was just being real you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying like and i know a lot of people do that when they're climbing up that hollywood ladder and trying to make it people schmooze and giggle and laugh and stuff that's not funny when you're trying to get in so i can't really even really knock her for kind of being fake because oh my god look at her now you know what i'm saying it's it's gotten her into higher places and she's very talented so while we're doing the roll call aubrey is very talented and the good moments that we had i value those i cherish those unfortunately it don't seem like they were sincere at the end of the day like damn. i thought you was my girl but at the end of the day you really wasn't damn it's, it's motherfucking damn. Don't go anywhere. In the mix with Twix, we'll be right back after this. Chasing the Beat is back, baby, and you do not want to miss this. So gather around your screens as some of your faves come together to showcase their artistic gifts and creations. Created by Oliver Twix, this celebration of queer creativity is one for the books. So tune in to see show-stopping performances from artists like T.S. Lil' Kendra, Lyric London, Tremaine Terrell, Conka Garcon and JJ Jones, Fly King I and Andre, Kesey and Astro, Ilwin, Rico Casadon, Oliver Twix, and so many more. Plus, a whole lot of extra special guests stopping by. Chasing the Beat is back, baby, and you do not want to miss this. Only on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. See you there. Welcome back to In the Mix with Twix. Girl, what celebrities did you date? Is it a celebrity or a sports player? Are they considered celebrities? I guess so. Yeah. I mean, the point is, I've been in the mix. <laughs> I've been around the shimmy shimmy parties. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. like, you're not taking me nowhere where I've never been. But I dated Alan Iverson and um, Charles Woodson. It was my love. I was married and Actually, Alan Iverson was like the first person that I was ever with after being with the same person for over 16 years. So that was like crazy. My husband was like the love of my life. And I was just kind of getting caught up into that little world. And I don't know if he ever believed it or not, for real, for real. But it took me for a loop just to like like that because I didn't like know who he was at the time or anything. Of course, I figured it out but yeah him and charles woodson is probably like the biggest names of like people that and charles woodson he's married now i mean alan charles well anyway that's <laughs> that's a whole other story, baby. <laughs> but girl don't act like i ain't been around no bosses and i ain't been to no big parties. okay like you Not ain't been crazy. around the world that i yeah yeah and i still can't find my baby <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. I love it. Next on the list is Doc Holiday. Yes. That was my boy. I love Doc Holiday. Real G, OG, keep it a hundred, hella cool, never change, never flip the script. Solid. Doc Holiday. I was watching Doc Holiday, of course, you know, recently, you know, I was watching it back and I was looking at Doc Holiday. I was like, Doc was kind of cute. Like Doc kind of had a, like a little, a little he sweet a boy sweet. swag to him with the dress, and he had a nice little demeanor, and you know he was talented and kind of easy going. I was like, I would have, you know, I probably would have, you know. You, <laughs> Doc used to be really cool with me. Like he really was like my folks. Like when you see me, I'm like Zio to the sea with Ann, and like he was my. He felt like he was from Oakland. He felt mm -hmm. like very familiar to me. Mm hmm. Yeah. Next on the list is Phil. <laughs> Let's revisit Phil. I Phil was just hella fake to me again. Um, Uncle Tom, if I had to probably Damn. Say, he just like you ever seen somebody that's happy to be there? Like today I was in TJ Maxx and this girl, she was talking, she was a manager. See my story. She was talking, she was belittling the girl. I hate people that feel like I'm on this level now, so I and I'm, and that's how I felt about Phil. He just, I don't think Phil ever really too much cared for me. Everybody else was kind of in my corner. And he just seemed, he seemed like girly to me. Like he, it, like he was competing with me almost, but not really. If I wouldn't say competing, but he just had a lot of bitch assness to him. Oh my God. Yeah. Caddy? Caddy, yeah, just. He was whack. Like when I realized oh um, that he did know my age, I went back. We're all at a table, and he's like, "So when is your birthday?" Like he was trying to like provoke it, and I'm just like, "Bro, just bust me out if you know, but don't sit up here and like play this game. Like if you know a lot about my age, just come out with it and say you lie. But don't sit at the table and like make me go on and on about it." Mm -hmm. Then again, I guess is that kind of crazy? Maybe I shouldn't. Have. I'm. I hate lying. I don't. I'm not a liar person. So that was kind of like crazy. And so you said you, you did lie about your age. I lied about my age. Why so? To to like you know. Get I mean, on. look at how Hollywood and entertainment is. Like, look at it now. Mm -hmm. Like, age is like. <sighs> me and my daughter just went through this thing, especially now. Every people really, it's worse now. You they think so? You, I think it's worse. I think like people think 30 is just like oh I think it's so much more desensitized now. Really? I don't like know. when you look at people like Lizzo, Lizzo didn't become Lizzo until she was like 32, 33. Mooney Long, 32, 33. Nicki Minaj, like at the height, like at the height, height, height of her career, she was like 31, 32. I think it's more just, I think age is more desensitized. I could be wrong, or I have it, you know. Well, I, I don't know if it's a girl, like maybe for women, it's a little bit more different. I don't mm -hmm. know, but I feel like um, not maybe so much just for entertainment, but just in general. When you hear the young people speak, like, I don't know exactly how old you are, but they speak about like turning 30, like it's the end of the world or, you know, I'm getting so old and, and age shaming. I see it a lot, like on the internet and, and it could be cause I'm, I'm getting more up there uh, in mm -hmm. my age. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like people I always tell people, if you don't want to get older, then you just, you dying in it's, it's one or the other you dying or you getting older. I want to yes. live. So be happy that you're here, you know, like, that's why I try to stay looking good. I work out. I try to eat the right things because I have nothing to do but get older. That's going to happen. Yeah. Now with all of these face procedures and this, that, and BBLs and <laughs> all of this shit that people doing, you know what I mean? To mm -hmm. quote unquote, stay looking young, like you're going to get older. You know what I'm saying? So it's just inevitable. mind your business and drink your blood. Yeah. Yeah. We got to. Next on the list is Lori Ann. That was my girl. Lori Ann was hella cool. She always was sincere to me. Um, it feels like we had a shift in the road at one point in time. And now that I am older now and I recollect what happened, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is what happened. 
we had baby what is you you're making me this is the cat william couch right now what's going on no come on but we did you remember king magazine back in the day yes so Lorianne called me. She put me on to that. Lorianne was always, people used to be like, you're her favorite. She she was my girl. And at the time, she they flew me out and everything to do King Magazine. We wasn't really making that much money for making the band at all. And before I was doing making the band, I was doing hair. I had all my hustles, my modeling gigs and everything. And literally, I had to shut it down. And we were making like $50 a week. Like we wasn't making no money yet. On we making was, the band? Baby, you see the camera is shaking. About baby, to lose we, control. Baby, listen, we wasn't making no. Y'all were making y'all were making fifty dollars a week. Did did they pay y'all episodically once the show came out? No, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Did y'all get any type of stipend? No. Mm -mm. How were y'all? How were y'all? Okay, okay, let me stop. Go baby, we were sharing sandwiches. So this is leading up to my point. So anyway, when she did me on King Magazine, I was so grateful and thankful for that opportunity. But I had ran up a phone bill talking on the phone to like $800 in the room. And I didn't have the money to pay for it. I ain't gonna lie. If I see Lorianne right now, I will hand her double that right now because mommy got it going on a little better. But we wasn't really making no money. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. If, I don't know if that's what it was, but I can see that that could probably piss somebody off, you know, because me and Lorianne was cool. But to sum her up, she was a sweetheart. She worked with me a lot. She believed in me a lot. Like it was a blessing for me to be on that show because I don't consider myself like this extraordinary singer or dancer really and i was making it so far and the accolades that i was getting from laurianne from doc from diddy from um johnny wright was really good you know mm -hmm. so i was very satisfied i love laurianne so if i'm hearing this correctly your relationship with laurianne changed once she had to pay an 800 dollar I don't bill. know if it's she because she never confronted me about that mm. but i know that the bill did get ran up and I didn't have the money to pay it. And I feel like after that, it kind of went downhill. So Lorianne, if you ever saw this, I would, I, I feel like I would take responsibility. Like I've grown up now a little bit more in stuff like that. Well, I was kind of like, well, shit, oh, well, somebody should have told me. I ain't know I couldn't lay on the phone all night up in this hotel, you know, and things were much different back then with cell phones and all of the stuff that we have now. I was talking on the hotel phone. So I could be wrong, but I feel like that kind of eats me up because maybe that's what it is because we were so cool. You know what I mean? Okay, well, maybe she yeah. will see this and maybe she'll be child. I mm. love you, Lorianne. Lorianne was hella cool. Lorianne, and she said she'll give you double girl. And I mean, I'm pretty sure, Lorianne, you got money too, but a nice 1600 in 2024, an extra, yeah. that, ain't, that ain't bad. You know, no shit. Because, you yeah. know, because I, I, if something like that happened to me now, I would be mm -hmm. so responsible for it but mm -hmm. at the same time we was not really making no money you like we really wasn't making no money like if you were on that show you gave up everything to be there okay i'm gonna put a quick pause and roll call and let's talk about money so you mean to tell me this hit 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 reality tv show that is competing against the likes of american idol top model Flavor of Love. This is MTV's version of, you know, of those shows. Yeah. Millions, millions of people, millions of people watching this weekly. How much, how much were you getting paid again? Baby, if I'm not recall, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was $50 a week. And when they told me I made it to be on the show, I said, well, are they going to pay us? Like how much? They said, don't worry. It'll be enough to sustain a lifestyle. I never forget. Like they didn't give me a price. So I'm thinking, I guess they're going, you know, back then, they're going to give us at least $3,000 a month or, you know, something like that. I'm living in California. And, honey, I remember we used to, me and Arbor used to wait till 5 o'clock when the sandwiches went on sale. Like, I learned how to save a lot of money doing making the band. I learned how to make $5 stretch to a week because I had a child and everything at that time. My daughter was in a private school and all of that when I started doing making the band. Now, afterwards, a lot of my money came from doing hostings and bookings and gigs and radio shows and all. I made a lot of money doing that. But as far as the show, baby, baby, let me let me get that mouth together. That mouth ain't. <laughs> baby, 
Yeah. I guess that is kind of true what people be saying about Diddy, huh? But listen, on the other hand, if you think about it, how much would I have had to pay to get vocal trained by Doc Holliday? Like if I was in LA and I chose him to be my vocal trainer for three months straight every day, how much would that cost me? You know what I mean? If I had to be managed by Johnny Wright, who managed Britney Spears and Alicia Keys. So on the other hand, the experience is not, now that's not to say they couldn't have gave us the money, but I always try to find, settle on the best part of a situation. So the positive of that, working with Lorianne Gibson, somebody who's choreographed for everybody in the industry, I've had to, I've got trained by her. So in that case, you know what I mean? You like child, no, they could have did been. You, did you sign a contract to be a part of the show? Yes. And nowhere in that contract it said nothing about payment. No. Not I mean, that I can remember. I just remember asking when they was telling us, because when they said you made it when I was in Miami, it was literally like tomorrow. Everything was just moving like this. So it was like LA, Miami. I think Miami might have been one of the last stops before New York. So when they said I made it and I was going to New York, it wasn't like in three weeks. It was like tomorrow or the next day. It was insane. Oh, wow. So, I mean, what do you, like in real life, if they would have told me no money or $1,500 a week for that opportunity, I was going either way it went. So when they said, it'll be enough for you to sustain your lifestyle, I didn't even, I was like, well, I'm going either way it go, so... <laughs> Child, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm so sorry. I'm just so gagged that, yeah. like, I mean, because again, I've done reality TV. I've been on We TV, and, and I've done. Netflix, I know they paying y'all now. Do y'all probably get? I it. mean, not granted. I ain't quitting my job, you know, yeah. and just living off of it. But it was enough for me to like. It was cute, you know. Yeah, you know, and. Listen, child, you know, I I didn't better I'm a, I'm a always asked for a little bit more. You know, can I right. you know I'm a always I'm a always asked for a little bit more because and I think I was a little definitely more green back then. I was mm -hmm. just so thirsty to go. Because these go, niggas got know? money. These networks and production companies got the money. They the yeah. money is there. The money was there. Um yeah. I'll just chop it up too. Of course, this is the beginning of reality TV. This is the beginning of you know, modern entertainment business. And so, yes. uh, like many people, you wouldn't be thinking to ask those questions. All you know is, I'm getting a chance to work with Diddy and who finna pass this up? I Either get it. Go. But then that's the problem with the industry now. That's why so many people, you end up hearing people crying, like TLC, the stuff that happens in the industry, when you're right there in that moment of the excitement, you sometimes do things that maybe you shouldn't have done. You know, but the exposure that I was able to gain, not to say that, I mean, I wouldn't have wanted more money, but I'm 15, 20 years later, however long it been, doing an interview, talking about it right now today. People still come up to me. People still remember lines that I said. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But honey, yeah, we still could have got paid because we definitely, I, I say it definitely taught me how to make $5 stretch for a week. Damn. I was looking in the coupon papers, like what's on sale in the grocery store. I never done stuff like that. And so we're still on roll call, but girl, you didn't got me to a good point now. And so production wasn't making sure you guys had food, had clothes, had water. Uh-uh. None of that. Malika, you are lying to me. No. Maybe it's because it was the beginning. We had to buy our own food. We had to buy our own groceries. Remember when Jason came in and threw all the groceries out? The bread. Wait, that was y'all's food that y'all had bought with y'all own money. Yes. Yes. They didn't have nothing for us in there. Uh -uh. They had a fabulous, another place was fabulous, but that was it. We didn't have anything. Okay. Girl, you done woke me up. It's so, like, I remember seeing sometimes on the show, like, if a girl was running late or whatever, whatever, and she had to take a, a, a taxi or the subway, y'all was paying for that stuff out of y'all pocket. No, we did have a car. 
Now, if you was running late and you didn't, you missed the transportation when the girl was in school, but we had a car take us everywhere. That was nice in New York. Like we had a car to take us everywhere. We but they, to, like, but they wasn't feeding y'all, Malika. Mm -mm. No, like I would say, Lori Ann probably took us out to eat or something like that, where we all well, wait, was we carrying the one over the two at the table? I'm like, was we? We what? We was working so hard, but let me tell you. We was working so hard that my friend came to visit me like the time off. Like I totally never got all the way up to like, obviously Beyonce level. But when you hear celebrities be like, I didn't have time for a relationship. I didn't, it was no time. I, I, I missed my graduation. I missed like we were doing something. You would forget to eat sometime, honestly. Like you, it was like no time to do nothing. So we wasn't even, I lost so much weight working out there because we were just always on the go. It was just always, you're going to wake up at four in the morning. You're going to run. You're going to go to the gym. You're going to learn three steps. You're going to learn two new songs. You're going to go to the vocal training. You're going to come back, practice again. Then you got to write a new song. Like it was crazy. Nonstop. Like you literally would forget to eat sometime. And so production made themselves responsible for transportation and housing. Yeah. I am so gagged at that. Now, on your reality show, did they have it as a rule that you can't talk to the cameraman? Or can when, you, like, talk to the cameraman? Um, okay, so I did a docu-series, which was, like, it wasn't a competition. So, child, I was oh. talking, you know, child. That, that was, like, a more relaxed situation. It was, like, a competition. Oh. Now, the competition I did do on Netflix, which was The Circle, they treated me like... I feel like they treated me like my name was Beyonce. Like, it was nothing I could not ask for. It was nothing oh I did wrong. It was nothing I couldn't do. Um, now, the filming time was long. Like there will be some scenes, it will be, like, really, really, really long. But yeah. anything I requested for food, they got it. Child, I had them go get me a, um, a nail polish set with a little UV light to do my nails. They went and got me a book bag for me to take back home to put my stuff in. No, when I, wasn't doing when I wasn't filming, child, I was all over Europe going to this, eating at this restaurant, going to this amusement park. So I was saying with yours, like, I would say, like, through my modeling agency and stuff, when I get, when I do an audition and then I get a commercial or something like that, they treat me like red carpet. Food is there that are because mm -hmm. I've auditioned for like a role, but this a was role. like a competition for us trying to fight to get in the band. And I think it because it was so like in the beginning of like this was like one of the first reality shows. It was, yeah. So, so it's so they have evolved, but I love your attitude I about know. it. I yeah. love your attitude about it because a lot of people yeah. I've spoken to are like mad, but I'm glad you know that's how it's see because honestly. Even though it wasn't right or the best, that's how it was. Like Diddy yeah. and the production company and MTV, all those people were figuring that stuff out. You know, like yeah. Top Model, American Idol, Flavor of Love, The Bachelor, all these shows were coming out around the same time and right. the culture didn't exist. These shows that you guys were on created the culture where people were able to learn, you know, mistakes and how to do better. Um, It just sucks that that's what you had to go through, girl. Jesus. Yeah, I, I was... I was hoping that they would have paid us like at that point at least fifteen hundred a week. You know what I'm saying? Like that would have been better for me coming for like that's what I was thinking. I was thinking it's Diddy, it's in TV. We gonna get at least fifteen hundred, a thousand a week, at least. You know what I mean? Like I live in California. My daughter went to a private school. I had to still pay all of these bills, so I wiped out all my savings and stuff by the time I was done with my Damn. Family. Yeah. Next on the list, child. <laughs> Johnny Wright. Johnny Wright. He was chill. He was cool. Um, he's just Johnny Wright. You know what I mean? Like he, I he was very neutral. Mm -hmm. I liked what he had to say about me, so I wasn't. You know, Johnny Wright was cool. Him and Phil just seemed a little caught up into the Hollywood world, though. Mm. To me, a little bit, if I had to say, like they really in that lifestyle but johnny wright i liked johnny better than i like phil where is johnny wright baby somewhere probably johnny in. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm. Uh, um, next on the list, get ready. Okay. Diddy. 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 Diddy was very um intimidating. Mm -hmm. Not really for me, but he was kind of like he did intimidate people because it's like Diddy when he comes in. Um, I will say for me, like a lot of people have been asking me to do interviews more now with all of this stuff that's going on with Diddy. And they expect for me, like a lot of people have not granted me the interview once they did like a little pre, you know, talk to see how was it going to go that I don't have any of these crazy ass stories about none of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So because for me, Diddy was an inspiration. He was very motivational, um, very hardworking, very creative. Uh, he pushed me to my limit. You know what I mean? So, and he never came to me sideways. So I'm like, if you go back to any of those programs, he never said nothing crazy to me about me. But everything that Diddy addressed me when he was talking to me, I can take that footage and it's great footage. You know what I mean? Like you rose to the occasion. The thing that I sent you today, which happened to be like a Facebook memory from years ago, he said amazing things about me. So I'm just like, Diddy is who he is. Now with all of this extra stuff that he got going on, I don't know. It was not part of my reality. You know, mm -hmm. that ain't like nothing of that stuff happened to me. All I know is that when I worked with him, he put, he put me up to working like the hardest that I've ever worked and pushing me to a level of greatness that I could appreciate. I love that. I really yeah. love that. And that's very um, respectful. And, you know, that speaks to your integrity that, you know, yeah. even though all this stuff is going on um, and to the public, to the vast majority of the public, it looked like the shit is true, but, yeah. you know, you're sticking Baby, to what you- I can easily get my money back that I didn't get on making a band if I just told a lie. Because people mm -hmm. are ready to hear it. I'm telling you, these blogs that are calling me and stuff, they want me to say, if I say it right now, Diddy did anything to me, they will take it and run with it. Trust me. Yeah, they would. Be, how they say, you doing it for clout? If I was clout chasing right now, trust me, I could be like, and this is my moment. Because I could say whatever. Yeah. But I'm like disappointing these people because I'm not. You know, Diddy, if your ass see this... What happened? <laughs> they tell the truth, Diddy. You know, you know, I ain't seen none of it. My ass wasn't there at all. I only know Diddy through the TV screen and the cell phone in the in yeah. the in the radio in the car. Um, right. but Diddy used to be someone growing up that I looked up to. You know, like yeah. I I remember him saying, "While you sleep, somebody else is getting to your dream." And I remember hearing that as a child, and that's stuck with me like and it still sticks with me all my life that really is like a one of the batteries and why I work so hard and like really try to dedicate myself to my craft because I remember Diddy saying that um and I, I knew I could work so hard until I worked with Diddy I thought that I was hustling before but what you can get done between four in the morning and eight in the morning is insane and I and I'm not I haven't tried it again <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You can get a lot of work done between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. You really can. I and do it a lot. Learn, like you could be doing so much and you turn around and it's only eight o'clock and you're like, oh my God. We did that. And the push. So yeah. Yeah. I hope everybody just get justice, you know? If something been done wrong, everybody get justice. Yeah. You know? Um Last on the roll call, I want to ask this. What was your experience like with the production, the producers, the cameraman, the people who were actually running the show? What do you remember about them? Um, One of them was fine. I remember he was really cute white. I like, I'm never dated out of my race, but he was a cute white guy. Um, sad that we couldn't talk to them. So like, that was like a big, big that was like industry rule number one so like when we first came that was like sit down you are not y'all need absolutely not to say anything to the cameraman or anything like you couldn't and the reason why is because th they wanted them to become a fly on the wall because they mm -hmm. were always there so you ever seen these reality shows like oh my god how are they saying this in front of these people just sitting right there 
So they just became like nothing to us. And I think they, if I'm not mistaken, they all was wearing black. So there was one lady, her name was Leola, like the big directors and stuff. I remember her being hella cool. Perry being like, they loved me. They waited for my confessionals. Like my confessionals, they really liked my, you know, whatever I was going to say, my little one, two liners. But I remember the production just being cool. Everybody was cool that we could talk to because majority of them you you was not to say anything to them they couldn't say you never even heard them talk mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay girl you are done with roll call that was an amazing roll call you did yeah. that yeah stay right here because after this there's more in the mix of twix what's up everyone it is darius asking you to check out my newest children's book dj stands on business Follow along as five friends who are entrepreneurs by the name of Pixel, Raven, a dynamic duo we can learn, and a children's book author named DJ. Use their entrepreneurial spirit to save money to go on a trip to Mexico. So follow along as children can learn about terms that teach them about entrepreneurship and give them the opportunity to open up the world in the adventures of friendship, and entrepreneurship. You can check out my children's book, DJ Stands on Business, as well as DJ's favorite day and Twinkle Little Star at www.kingdariusbooks.com. Welcome back to In the Mix of Twix. Yes. Okay, let's jump back into these questions about the episode. So, the first time we hear you speak, is the prayer after the first cut. What yeah. do you remember feeling in that moment in the competition with so many girls getting cut at once? Damn, I was praying on that show. Um, <laughs> you don't I believe you were? I remember like always being thankful that it wasn't me, but also compassion for who it was. Mm -hmm. Because I could only imagine who it was and just being very thankful and grateful in that moment. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. just always thanking God. I'm a very spiritual person and I always like to like thank God right in the moment for some, you know, whatever the blessing is there. I'm always, I'm all day saying thank you, but you never knew when it was your time. And I, and then if you thought it was just that feeling of maybe it being your time is just crazy. So mm -hmm. Just feeling compassion. I love that. And then a little bit of, Ooh, I'm happy it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. So after that first big chop, we see Lorianne crank it up on you guys. I mean, she comes back to that dance rehearsal hall and she turns up the heat. You guys relate to Lorianne's dance rehearsal while it looked like you guys were just having fun. What was that mix up about? And what did 20 minutes at 5.0 on the treadmill feel like. That was insane. We used to have to sing. Again, I was a person that was always hustling. So I loved the push. I loved like, oh, I can handle this. Because before I even went on making a band, I was always at the gym. I was always running the lake. I was, I felt like every moment that they were putting in front of me, I was prepared for it. So I'm like, I could do that. Even though it was pushing and challenging me, it was still like I could do it. Mm -hmm. So I just always felt like, all right, I can do that. I can do that. Um, and that time when we were late, I believe that's when they kind of started doing the, a little bit of trying to add some drama to it. Because mm -hmm. what I remember like in that editing that it kind of wasn't like that. You know what I mean? We was a little bit late, but Lorianne wasn't there too. Like it was at that moment, I kind of felt like this is a little bit of y'all trying to bring the drama right now. A produced moment. Exactly. Yeah. Even though I did just say five minutes ago that nothing was really like that, but I felt like, are y'all for real? Like, I, because it was a while ago, but I do remember that late thing that it was something more to it that was kind of like not what it was. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. You guys had a contestant by the name of Michelle who was a student and she was struggling with competing in the show as well as attending classes and doing her work. Was her being in school truly a hindrance to you guys' practice? She wasn't in my group. So mm -hmm. honestly, secretly, I was like, they group ain't gonna do good. Um, it was. 
it really was because she was good. You know, Lori Ann really, really liked her. So for her group, it was because when you're practicing, you know how well, I don't know if you've worked in a group element, but when you're practicing and you have somebody here and then they're not there and you're trying to mix it around a little bit and her part, you know, that she was supposed to sing. So it was for for that group. It it didn't affect me at all. Um I can see that. And yeah. I and from what I can remember, she did have a strong voice. She reminded me more of like Nickelodeon, Disney Club. Not Avril I can never see her for making the band. Like, yeah, she was good, but for Broadway or something like that. Mm. Not for Danity King. What was your reaction when Lorian came and told you guys that Diddy was sending her out to find more girls because he was not happy with anything he saw in the house? I was like, well, why don't he come up in here and find it? it, it hang out with us. I feel like he wasn't never spending enough time with us. Mm -hmm. Whatever he had going on at that time was overshadowing his time. I feel like every time he came around, everybody was just so on pins and needles because he didn't come around enough. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were so comfortable around Lori Ann. She like, but when did he come? Y'all don't bring that same energy. So he never saw what she saw because he wasn't around enough to me, you know, but it was just like, damn, really? It was disappointing. And so while Lorian and the team is away in Atlanta finding new girls, we get introduced to your den mother, Jason. What yes. was your reaction to him coming into the house screaming, Dan! 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 Baby, Dan! I, was, I didn't know what it was. I was just like, he was, he was messing with everybody. And I was just like, God, please don't mm -hmm. let him do it to me because I'm not about to let him punk me. I'm, just, mm -hmm. I'm not about to let him do this. And I'm just like, you never knew what could get you cut. So mm -hmm. I didn't like everything to me in my mind is, is it a test? Is this, are they trying to see like Levante, if I slap her, am I going to get <laughs> cut? Because he said he don't want us to fight. Like everything that was happening that felt like weird like that. You just didn't know if it was a part of a, see, we was just trying to see if, Y'all can bear the pressure or something. So I was just like, please, if I could just not have no encounters with him. And it worked out. Me and him never had no issues. And then after the show, we was cool. We hung out. I went to go visit him. He was doing his own reality oh, nice. show where he invited me. Like, he was like a friend of mine afterwards. He had his own reality show? Mm-hmm. Or he was, like, doing the pilot for it and everything. And I was a part of it. He was in Vegas. He had a lot of stuff going on where he would include me and be calling me. Like, we were cool after the show. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. That's so nice to hear. Yeah. So early on, newcomer Levante seemed to come off very strong and polarizing within the group. How was that first rehearsal with her that you guys had with Doc? What do you remember about that? Every encounter that I had with her was horrible. Nothing was nice about her. She was not a team player. She was weird acting. I mean, she could sing good and stuff, but she would have never been a person in the group for me. She didn't have no type of it factor to me at all. Um, she was just hella difficult, hella complicated, just annoying as hell. And I didn't like her at all. Are you in, you said you're in New Orleans, right? Mm-hmm. I can hear someone playing the um baby the saxophone. Uh huh. I love it. No, I I absolutely love it. I this guy love he it. walks down the street. He's like a guy that used to be really popular, and now he unfortunately got on drugs and stuff. Oh, he man. walks up and down the street all day playing this thing out of tune. So he's he'll probably be a little bit down. You are you can hear it. That's crazy. Uh huh. No, it's okay. It's okay. okay. I love it. Yeah. Um. Okay. So Jason came in. And stop practice to let you guys know that you needed to spring clean. Was yes. this was this just him putting on antics, or was it the producers putting him up to do this? Jason even took the phone away from you and got into a cursing match with Andrea in the kitchen. There was a lemon squeeze. It just it just became Jason versus everybody. What do you remember about all of that craziness associated with Jason? Again, I was just like, I, 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 you remember, oh, look, I'm kicking this thing. Let me get back okay. to the I just remember being like, um, I remember that I said, mom, somebody is bossing us around right now. I got to hang up. I just was like, I didn't want, I didn't want to have no problem. 
and he wasn't focusing on me. He really mm -hmm. had it in for Aubrey and Andrea. So I was at one point, no, I was like getting involved, taking up for them when um, Aubrey and Andrea got into it with Levante. But every moment with Jason, I was just like, I hope he don't try this with me. Like he was just, that was another piece of unbelievable drama. And it made it like before he came, we was all getting along. And I think honestly, MTV was thinking it would be a little bit more drama with all girls in the house like that. And we didn't have it. We were getting along. We were praying together. We were helping each other out. Like in the, it was really no drama. Our show was not really, people watched our show, but it didn't get like these ratings that was just out the roof from stuff that was like fighting and you know we didn't have that really we were all getting along we were really all trying to make the band and jason was just like a nuisance <laughs> definitely malika that what i'm about to ask you is something that i've really been looking forward to so i hope you can remember oh lord give us the unfiltered uncut version of what you remember that happened when Lorian doc and I believe Johnny, I know, Lorianne, Phil, and Johnny came into the house and basically told Jason he had to get out and he was no longer needed. And it <laughs> resulted in this big blow up where Jason was going completely crazy. Just how they showed it is really, they did a good job of editing that. They literally came in. We knew they were out of town. Thugging with their rounds. Thugging with their rounds. Or was they getting the girls... They were out of town for a moment where Jason was like completely in charge. Like mm -hmm. he, we didn't have anybody. So when they came back, I was the first person to get Lorianne like, look, giving her the tea. But the way it happened was just how it happened. Everybody had kind of just told her they pieces and they spills. And I think what happened, Diddy played back the cameras and was like, no, this ain't it. Like this is taking it too far. But how they showed it is just how it went. Did the, remember he was like, did the cameras get that? He was, Jason went off. Like, all of that was just real. And then afterwards, it was like the calm after the storm, baby. Was, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it was, he was a mess. Jason was a mess. He was a rabble rouser. But you know what? Get to get to know him after the show, he was actually a sweetheart. He was a mm. pie. Yeah. He was. I, I kind of, I kind of, it kind of sucks we didn't get to see that side of him, you know? Yeah. Me being a queer person of color, I'm always rooting for my queer people of color in media. Yeah. And, you know, especially early on in reality TV, I feel like a lot of us get that, like, catty, antagonistic edit. Um, and not saying that's not who he was, but it would have been nice to see all of these amazing things I've seen people like Nikki Gilbert and now talking to you, um, how you guys speak about him. I would have loved yeah. to see that on that show, on that platform. Yeah, well, he came there and he was, he understood what reality TV was. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what he was doing. He was creating his moment and he did it. You know what I mean? I think he did just what he wanted to do. Like imagine him now on one of these reality shows. He would Amen. be through the roof. Like through he would have roof. so many ratings and stuff. Like he was just so outrageous. And I think that he understood the shock value in that. And that's what he was bringing and mixed in with him just being a mess for real. But I think he was overdoing that just for it to be us talking about him right now on the interview years later. Um, and so the next, the next point of conflict comes from Levante, who was in the group with you, Andrea, Aubrey, um, I don't want to mispronounce her name. Lachey? Lachey? Lachey. Mm -hmm. Lachey. Oh, where Levante is struggling with, like, focusing. She's getting into it with Aubrey and Andrea. Even in the in the rehearsals, as great, a, as great of a singer, um, even in the rehearsals, as great of a singer that the show presented her as, she was struggling with the singing parts. But when you guys first get in front of Lori Ann, you guys kind of, like, pull it together. What do you remember about putting together that performance and what led up to you guys rehearsing in front of Lorianne, where she was like, okay, y'all kind of good. Like, I kind of like this. Yeah, we, Aubrey and them, like, for it to be them who made the band, they were very, 
professional. Like for me doing things before making the band, like you see how it was when we was doing the um, practice and stuff. So we pulled it together enough in front of Lorianne at that moment. But this time that you're talking about, Levante was cut on that same time because I, I I was I told Lorianne too she had to go. Not that I would tell Lorianne what to do, but we was just like this girl is complicated. She's difficult, and I'm sure that they was probably going back and looking at the tapes to see how it was going. And mm -hmm. she got cut at the perfect time because I'm like I can't with this girl. It's it's gonna be something. Before we move on, I would love to know: Do you remember how you guys' song went? Move um, your body, shake your body, get in naughty, naughty. Oh, yeah. Your body, shake your body, get in naughty, naughty. Go to the Going club, to the club. Like, like, let's show the boys. Let's That's go. Crazy. Let's go. Yes. That should have been a song. And I remember your part. Uh, my hands. Uh, 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 yeah. Do you remember that song? Wet lips, my hips, swinging from side to side. Yes. <laughs> yes. That our song was good. They really like our song was like the hit. That's why I'm thankful for that. You know, like to be a part of all of that. Like the people that remember the songs. Our song is the song that people remember. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I say I was the best. I was the best loser. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my so god. They, they made a big deal when they let me go. You know what I mean? Like because. Out of everybody that didn't make the band, I think people was really sad to see me go, you know, after all that I had been through. But that song is, they should have put that song out. People still want to know about that song. Mm hmm Yep. Um, and so after Patty gets cut, Levante gets cut, Lorianne comes back in, she turns up the heat, you guys run around the reservoir twice. And then you guys go to a dance rehearsal where Lorianne is like, I never forget this. She's like, Monica, my girl, why did she react so largely towards you in that rehearsal on that day? Wait, in a good way? Yeah, yeah. It, it was in a good way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everything was kind of just like a blessing. Like, because I, I was like, I didn't really do nothing that amazing, but all right. You know, mm -hmm. Lori Ann just fooled with me like that. Like, we was just cool. But every time something like that happened, it would just boost me up because I'm like, I was always feeling like I was getting along because I never mm -hmm. was really a singer. You know what I mean? Like, for me to just keep going and making it and going and making it, I was like, so thankful. So do you think, and I'm, I'm just asking you, I don't have an opinion. Do you yeah. think it was your personality and your ability to work well with others that pushed you along? Or was it that, you know, you were talented, you could sing and you could dance? What do you think it was think in hot time? everything. Like, I feel like I have that it swag. Like, if mm -hmm. I go somewhere, I'm always, not to be like that, but I've kind of always been like that. Like, mm -hmm. you can say, girl, it's the same like thing. Like, when I was five years old, people wanted to play in my sandbox, you mm -hmm. know? So I feel like it was just that I feel like because it was TV, you were mm -hmm. able to get my personality. Like if I I'm actually working on a project that I can't necessarily speak about, but it's another reality show. I'm I now know, like after doing that, how to make my personality shine even brighter. Mm -hmm. So I think it was just a combination of everything. But I'm a performer like. Like I said, I may not sing the best or dance the best, but I know how to perform. I know how to get your attention on stage. I have very good stage presence. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a combination of all of that. But I really, truly wish that Diddy would have got a chance to experience our girls more because he wasn't he wasn't around enough. Like he was more involved on the second round of girls to even mm -hmm. make a choice of who, who you did like or you didn't like. I want you to give yourself more credit because the music I heard that you sent me, yeah, girl, it sounds amazing. I loved it. I was like, oh, like this sounds good. But, because you know what? I come up in an era like Jason where if you don't sing like Whitney Houston, you know what I'm saying? Like that's mm. what I grew up. Like my favorite singer is Anita Baker. So yeah, I sing cool. Like I, I give myself that credit, but I think Jasmine Sullivan is a mm. singer. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Like I can do good. I I give myself credit. I feel like I'm a performer. I feel like I'm a host. I feel like I know how to entertain. But when you're talking about singing, 
Jennifer Hudson be singing. You know what I'm saying? Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey be singing. But Lachey be singing. You know Lachey? That was on the show. That girl mm -hmm. can sing. You know what, though? Because, you know, I'm not... I'm not the youngest anymore, but I'm definitely not the oldest in the room. And so yeah. I grew up on watching shows like American Idol, making yeah. the band, America's Next Top Model, where people were judged on what their talent was. And so as yeah. I entered into the entertainment business, I just focused on, baby, I can sing, I can rap, I can perform. Yeah. And now today, I now realize that, okay, being able to sing and actually having the talent and skills to do these things, it, it is needed and it's cool. But everybody I, making but it. But I feel like it's more so about how it's all packaged, what your sound is, what your story is, what um the type of songs you create, what you're saying in the music, the vibe, the feel, what what you're able to your make people do. Your social media presence. Your social media presence. Like there's so many other things that factor into now becoming an artist or a yeah. or a force of entertainment. That it's not only about being able to sound like Whitney Houston because it's a million people sounding like Whitney Houston and no team no shade. I love Jennifer Hudson, damn. Yeah. But yeah. we know her more for being. On, in movies and yeah. on screen as a personality and not so much for her amazing. her yeah. great amazing voice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, girl, so give yourself more credit because those songs you sent me was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, my bounce, my bounce rendition. Yes, now I live. You are watching In The Mix With Twix. We'll be right back after this. Yes, God, honey. Get ready for another show-stopping night in web reality. This is a deeper love to take pride in. Because when you have a bunch of eyes on you, honey, you have to be the T. Presented by Oliver Twist, this is the second installment of Chasing the Beat, a virtual showcase celebrating queer art and creativity. Catch the brightest stars take to the internet stage by storm, plus extra special performances from some fresh faces ready to make some noise. Watch this musical showcase only on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. Yes, God, honey. Welcome back to In The Mix of Twix. Okay, getting back into Make It A Band, we're still on season one, Make It A Band three. It comes to a point where Lorianne comes to you guys um, and they tell you, well, no, I don't think it was Lorianne. It may, it may have been Johnny, but the people come to you guys and basically tell y'all that y'all are going home for some time because they cannot make a final decision. Do you think that was always a part of the original plan or this was something that they were doing, you know, that was like a result of where they saw the show was headed towards. Why do you think that happened? Or do you know why that happened? I think it really happened because Diddy never really did like everybody as a group because he did not get a chance to see us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you know him, he, he do what he want. He gets what he want. So when he finally would see us, I just think he, it was, what he said was really what it was. Like, I don't think it was any strategy or anything. I think that he just didn't see it as a band, but I feel like he needed to come around and spend more time to see it. Mm. Yeah. Did you think that there was a band from the girls that were left? Yes. Like it was a, me, a, a actual marketable band that could compete with the Destiny's Child at the time, the Pussycat Dolls at the time, the Cherishes. You believe that? Yes. It was it was gonna be me, Aubrey, mm -hmm. Francesca, Eileen, and who was my other one? Myla was in there too. Um, who was left in the seven girls? Andrea wasn't in my group. So me, Francesca, Eileen, Aubrey, I guess in Myla. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and look at all of these girls who I'm telling you right now, you will see, yeah, it could have been a man for sure. When I look at you got that first season, I I feel like they had um they had three ideas, right? And I saw that once they broke you guys off into those groups. So I saw like maybe they were thinking about doing a Latin group. 
Yeah. Maybe they were thinking about doing an R&B, you know, pop type group, or maybe just like all the way, all the way pop, you know, like, and I hate to say it this way, but you know, white people pop, you know, Avril yeah. Lavigne, Pink, you That's know, that, that pop, 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 pop. Type of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. And I would have been, I saw me being like the hip hop girl. Mm -hmm. in the element of it like i could have been doing my little raps but then i you know throwing my little i was going to be like the hip-hop girl of it all yeah that's where i seen me at and yeah i can't wait till you go see francesca what she's up to now that girl please yeah. send me her page no i'm excited yeah. you have yeah. me so intrigued because you keep she's, digging her up i want to see now she's killing it right now and the way that they clowned her when she's like oh my god where you want us to go to hoopiter they were like making it seem like she was just not good and she's amazing amazing how long were you guys on break between them sending you guys home and bringing you guys back probably like two or three months mm. yeah yeah and did the show the show had already aired right you know it airs by the time you get sent home or something like it's a big gap in between airing and filming so, because because I remember I remember when you guys came back and Johnny was like, how many guys how many of you guys have signed autographs? You know how many guys are recognizing you? And you guys oh, yeah. were like sharing stories of like, oh, yeah. this person saw me at the movie theater. This person saw me in my car. Um, how did life change for you going home during that interim time? Yes, life changed. And if I could do it all again, I would have been knocking on everybody's door when I didn't make the band. But they made a sign like. You know, the stuff where you couldn't really sign to nobody else or do any work and all of this disclosure stuff. But it definitely did. I remember this girl coming into me in the dollar store and was like, why are you in the dollar store? Like, she was just like, I'm confused. Like, you're at the dollar store. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I still shop at the dollar store. But it did. It, I mean, like, one girl came up to me and started crying like I was Michael Jackson. Like, a lot of stuff I couldn't really go and this is why people should stay humble because it's not like this for me now years mm -hmm. later but at the time i never told nobody i wasn't taking a picture if they wanted to take a picture i never got this attitude like that mm -hmm. because whatever is there you can come it can go up and down in a drop of a dime my life changed when it when it aired the next day when i went outside it was crazy it was it was like oh my god it just my life changed like that Mm -hmm. I couldn't go to the mall. If I went to the mall, like people would be on the loudspeaker telling the other people, like on the other floor, I'm there. And it would just go crazy. And so you guys come back for this final evaluation. Malika has ditched the wigs. Malika has lost weight. Malika is looking good. What was your mindset during that break? Um as it relates to you getting back into the competition and trying to knock it out the park for this final home stretch? Baby, that's just what it was. I'm like, I had been through so much before that, like trying to make it and just auditions and all of this stuff that I'm like, I'm too close mm -hmm. to give it up. And you see when Diddy was like, you took it serious. I took it serious. Like I, love I that. saw myself on TV and I was like, oh my God, we was not. Look the wigs, great. Malika. Oh, yeah, them wigs, baby. Them, them $10 wigs <laughs> was the best. I went and got my singles. I was working out. I just really, you, know, you see somebody in the morning versus going out at night, it's, it can be totally different. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I'm doing this interview, but I could look a mess first thing in the morning. We were waking up and not even trying to be cute on camera. Like, we weren't really, like, how the new reality shows are now when they're putting on makeup. and We wasn't doing that. We were just getting up straight out the box just doing whatever i'm adjusting mm -hmm. a wig on tv you know like you just i don't know you saw it and you realized that you had to do better by the time you came back i'm shocked that myla didn't make it through because she seemed to be someone who was like a front runner the entire time and and watching it again it seemed like diddy was unsatisfied with how she had maintained her weight um but what do you believe happened to myla uh, Cause she could sing, she had a look, she was sweet, she could dance, but she didn't I make it through. Myla. You gotta go find her page too. She's still doing her thing. I think um, on that time off, we should have all like 
took out the competition aspect of it, knowing that it was going to be five people in a group and maybe we all should have been like still trying to connect with each other and sharpen each other up. Like I had that own zeal on my own, but what if Myla needed somebody to keep her motivated and pumped up? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. I think when she, when she did come back, I was kind of looking like, damn, I look like, cause I, I loved her, you know? So, and I was rude for her, but I think Diddy just, went too hard on her though i was like damn it ain't that bad you know what i'm saying but i don't know you know i didn't really talk to her about what it happened i don't know if she was pregnant or i can't really remember but i know that i was disappointed that he didn't make a band that day because i'm like you got a band here bro trust me you got one mm -hmm. were you shocked you made it through i wasn't because all the props that they was giving me you know, mm -hmm. like leading up to that, I'm like, well, baby, it, I'm about to be in this band, like the way everybody was talking. So when he said, I'm not making a band, but I'm giving some people a chance, I knew that I had to be in that chance because they had, they just were saying so many great things about me that day that it would only make sense. Okay. So here we go into season two of Make of the Band Three. Now I'm going back to my childhood, okay? Malika, I, like many other people, have fallen in love with you, right? Because you have personality. You know, like, yeah. you you made people laugh. You were you were charismatic. And so I was like, Malika, of course, is making the band because, yeah. you know, she's made it through. They're just about to add two or three more girls to these three. Um, and it's just going to be done. So going into season two, I was like, okay, Malika, Malika already know. Like, she, uh, she already got it. She got it. Even when I saw the new girls, I was like, Malika got it. You know, I always, for me, I always saw you as kind of like that t boss type of yes. type of person in the group. You know, the Candy Burris type of type of person. Like, you know, you got that cool fact, that cool factor, that swagger. The voice is different. It can still blend. It can stand yeah. out. You know, and like she's a she's a she's a girl's girl, so she's gonna be in the group. I'm not gonna lie, watching it back. Even before it got to the episode where you started struggling a little bit, it almost felt like your attitude was like, why am I doing this again? Like, why are y'all here? Why yes. are you doing this again? That's this is how crazy. It was, it no, was that mean, way. I was like, to me, there's nothing more that I can do. I didn't feel to let you know. It started to feel like it was a game. Like second season, it started to feel like it was turning into bull crap. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, and I'm like, I am older. I got real bills to pay. Y'all not paying money. I'm here for now, damn near two years now. Make the damn band. You know what I'm saying? Like, what we doing? That's really how I started feeling. For real. You was right about that. <laughs> now, of course, the first season had came out. So people know you. Were you making good money? Like, getting bookings and booking jobs and stuff like that before you guys came back to film the second season? I was, but the thing was, you was kind of limited on a lot of the stuff that you could do because you were still on call at any given moment that you don't know when you're going to the show. So I was getting like hosting oh, and doing this and doing that, but it's only so much you can do when MTV can call you and be like, tomorrow, you got to be back. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and then I don't remember like my exact contract, but I know they were all like, we couldn't talk about stuff. We couldn't do, it was like a lot of rules to being on there as far as um, the disclosures and, you know, things that you have to, you know, it is when you're working with a show. Yeah. So that was that. Were you intimidated at all when you saw the new batch, as Laurieann described it, a new batch of kittens ready to lick, lick that milk? <laughs> I wasn't. I never was. Like, I've never been that type of person. I feel like, so... Fun fact that people never knew, I had like a, um, my mom was a breast cancer survivor. So right before the show started, I had to get um, like a tissue or something. It ended up being nothing, but they had to go into my chest area and remove it. And it was this patch and I had stitches and all of that. Mm -hmm. I came back to the show, but I never told them that. I don't want to be like the old girl with a, breast cancer you know what I'm saying so when I first came back I was like kind of out of it a little bit but I didn't want to express that I didn't want to say like I didn't want to lead on to 
I'm over here with stitches up under my chest and I can't really dance that hard and I'm actually in a lot of pain. I just wanted to like push through. I literally never told nobody that that happened oh, to me. Wow. And it was literally like days before I came back. That's what was going on with me too. And I was just kind of like mentally getting over it because it started. They when we came back, they made the house hella small. Remember it, they had it like was stripped. Yeah, it was crazy. And I just that's when I was like, oh, they trying to like make us fight. It started started it started feeling like a reality show versus the competition that was real before we left. And I was just kind of yeah, I was kind of getting burnt out like. Make the band, cause I, uh, my daughter tuition due, my rent due, my my car it got repoed. <laughs> What's going on? Really? I don't think it got repoed. I think I just left the car behind. Like I think I got pulled over and it got towed the same day that I was leaving, and I never even looked into it, cause I'm like I'm gonna make the band. Don't worry about it. I'll be driving the Bentley by next month. <laughs> I, women in my life who've had to go get checked for breast cancer and they've had to go through that procedure where they go into the chest and they pull out tissue from firsthand experience i know that is a very strenuous procedure for right. anyone to go through and typically you have to be down almost a week before you can attempt to do anything so the fact that you have that done and you went back into filming and being someone who's done tv that means you had to pack you had to fly, you had to sit, you had to get ready, you had to lift, you had to do all those things. Girl, I am and applauding not you. Nothing. And, and not saying like everything was good. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense on why you were kind of over it. That makes sense. On top of you had been doing it for some time, you weren't getting paid, your life wasn't necessarily experiencing a big upgrade financially because you're here trying to get that upgrade. So I understand. Yes, it was a lot. Which I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but when you got eliminated, you said, if he wasn't going to pick me, I'm glad he let me go now. So I could go handle my business. Don't That's what you said. Yeah. I was like, honestly, I was so skinny. I be looking at me on those things and I was so skinny. Do I look much bigger now? I mean, do you want me to say that? <laughs> I'm like, do you want me to say that? I mean, you look amazing. You look amazing. Oh, God. That's like, is my child cute? He's so precious. <laughs> you give me the precious moment. Oh, I my gained, God. Since then, I've gained 40 pounds, though. I mean, shit, we got to eat around here, Malika, yeah. okay? You know, fuck um, it. We got yeah. to eat. Oh, okay. Early the group singing rehearsal with Doc. It appears as if you were struggling with harmonizing. And to us, you were the low man on the totem pole within that group. What was the roadblock for you? I just wasn't good at harmonizing in real life. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm still a person, if you're in the studio and you feed me the line, mm -hmm. I can sound amazing. But just for some reason, and I was working on that, like, just busting in and blending into that harmony. I'm good when I'm singing lead. Like now when I do shows and I'm the lead singer and people have to blend in with me, it's good. But in real life, I just really had problems doing harmonies. Like it's no way to sugarcoat it. I studied music at Morehouse. I've been a singer all my life. Harmony is something that is developed. Being able to harmonize is something that is developed over time. And me having yeah. sung in church all my life, I sing in the glee club at Morehouse. My degree is in the voice and conducting. I yes. still have to be conscious about harmonizing when I'm singing. Yeah, some people have it like that, but I feel like once I have my note right, my voice is butter. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's got the raspy, it's different. I love it. Once I get it right, and I just, I just love it. But I think Baby Girl was kind of enjoying the fact that I wasn't catching on as much. Dominique? You think she was enjoying it? You don't? Know? You seen it? I say she was enjoying it. Watching it, it seemed like she was frustrated. Now I could be wrong because I'm watching it and you were what actually there. That was it, frustrated. It seemed like she was frustrated that you couldn't get it. And I and I felt like it was because they wanted the group to do well so that yeah. the group doesn't get in trouble, you know? Right. It was just honestly, you you read the room very correctly. Like at that point, I'm just like, what's 
what's the gag? Like, for real, what's going on? That's how I was feeling. Like, it was just, you had to, like, leaving all that I had went through up until that, and then to tell us we didn't make a band and go home, and then be off for, like, two or three months, and then come back again, and y'all can make the house look like jail, and it's all the new girls. I'm just like, well, hold on. I'm, it's not too much more I can give y'all at this point. You know what I mean? To me, it should have been me, Aubrey, and Andrea on hold, waiting for two new, two new girls to add in with us. Mm. But yeah. then, I guess, in their eyes, how were they going to see how you guys would blend, you know? Right, that's true. Well, just keep working till they blended it in, because I was just <laughs> like... <laughs> Maybe. Going back to the singing challenge in Times Square, you guys seem to pull it together, and you seem to like do a great job. Yeah. Well, at least the edit that we saw. What do you remember about that day, and how were you guys able to pull it together so quickly? That day, um, you know what I love about that? You just have to do what you have to do. And again, that was one of those moments where I I saw that push like pushing myself the extra mile because literally I had lost my voice. I don't even know that day how I was singing because. I felt, I'd never forget thinking, like, if I was at home, if I was in Oakland, and this was just something that I had to do on my own, I probably would have called in sick or said, hey, I can't do it today or whatever. But, again, that's the whole Diddy effect of pushing your limits beyond what you can imagine. Because mm -hmm. I don't know where that voice came from, but it was gone. I didn't have any voice. So, I somehow got to Times Square and started singing. But I felt like if it would have just been me making that decision, I would have been at home in the bed, sucking on a Ricola, squeezing lemon and honey and stuff. But somehow, some way, I made it there and my voice was pulling it through. Because I could not talk that morning at all. That was crazy. You made it through Times Square. You guys had another eval that night where you guys had to sing before Diddy. Your group it wasn't the best, but you weren't the worst as well. Yeah. Um, but then we get to the next episode, and it's now the dancing challenge to Cheryl yes. Dennis's I love you. I yes. love you. Malika, what happened? So what had happened was <laughs> <laughs> that day, Diddy came up to our house clacking pots. Everybody, this wasn't, let's this wasn't go, on the let's show. Go, let's what? Go. That didn't, no, they didn't show that on the show. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Literally five minutes to be downstairs in the van. No matter where you was at in your life, no matter what you was doing, you had five minutes to get down into that van. Period. Now, <clears throat> I put on, we he didn't tell us what we was doing, where we was going, or anything. I put on, I don't know how you call those pants. I call it the scratchy material, almost like this, but a sweatpants, right? You don't really work out in that. I had on some tennis shoes that was like super flat. They were kangaroos. I just wasn't ready to, they were like those boxing kangaroos. And that's when we found out we had to run. So he said, and don't stop. Don't stop, can't stop. And I was like, okay, so whoever stopped is going to get eliminated. That's what I thought. I thought whoever was going to stop from that run that we had to do around the reservoir, that was going to be the way that he was going to eliminate you. So I literally ran that ran, run without stopping one time. It was hella hot outside. My pants were sticking to me. I was sweating profusely. I was drinking water from people that I didn't know. Like, it was crazy. Um... Then when we get in the car, I never forget this day like it was yesterday. And I'm thankful for it now. Like, I was sweating so much that this it just wouldn't stop. It was just like, it wouldn't stop. Like, I just never pushed myself to that limit. And then we pull up to the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater. And now we got to do the routine. So imagine I just pushed myself to a limit that I've never done in my life, period. Then you get there, and now they're going to show y'all. He was rotating us out. I probably did that step 30 times before I did the mess up. He really? was like, bring this girl, bring this girl. They were rotating it and rotating it and rotating it and rotating it and rotating it. So on that day, I was a step behind or a step four, but I was very confident because I was like, I practiced the step. I knew the step, and I was like, 
And when I looked, I was on the wrong step. But I also feel like they had already decided, really, that they wasn't going to pick me by that point. And I think Lorianne wasn't there. I think Lorianne didn't even want to be there when it happened. I think it was easier for Diddy because he was never really interacting with us anyway. So that was what happened. Like, I really knew the dance step that day. Obviously, I didn't because I was a step behind. But I was very confident. I'm like, oh, shit, I had missed a step. And then Johnny Wright was like, and you displayed it or whatever. But at the end of the day, I feel like it was all politics. Like, honestly, when we had to do that, then we had to do that routine. I would say in and out, transferring us, like moving it around. Each girl probably did the routine like at least 20 times after running. This so, is all the same break. So like, so like on the show, it makes it look like you did it like a couple times, but how many times did you actually dance that routine that day? Probably like 20, maybe I'm over exaggerating, maybe like 12. Because he kept rotating it. Bring Malika back. Bring You know how he kept rotating it? He showed the rotation. Of course, they probably couldn't show y'all that in the time mm -hmm. that it would take, but it was it just wouldn't stop. It was just like, what the hell is going on here? And you're still kind of tired as hell from running as long as I ever ran in my life 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it was very strenuous. And then the psychology like of it where you're you're stressing out because you know this is going to be an elimination so and so you get eliminated i remember being really sad i was like oh malika's not here no more like oh my god like it was like a blow um what do you remember about what you felt knowing that this dream of getting in the band was no longer a thing now I felt right in that moment, I almost felt like relieved, like it's over. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make it because I had kind of started having those little feelings of it all starting to feel like reality TV. Um, but in the realest way still, because they never gave us the storyline, but it was just little things that they was throwing in there as a monkey wrench. And I just started feeling like, like I said, if you don't want me and you don't think that you can see me in there, let me go now. Cause this, I'm you, y'all right. I am too old for this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like at this point, we're not getting really paid. I'm y'all not gonna. If I'm not making it anyway, I was figuring. Let me try to just be cute as I can be at this point, cause I was looking such a hot mess in the beginning. I'm like, let me at least try to, you know, get my TV time while I'm here. And I was sad, though. Like, looking back, I wish I would have went and, like, talked to Diddy afterwards just to say, like, let me stay in New York. Let me let me come to the studio afterwards or something. I was disappointed, relieved, overwhelmed, emotional, sad. Had, it was a lot. Like, it, you could just imagine all of the stuff just, like, thinking about it that night. And where did they take me after that? I think we went to a hotel or something. But, yeah, it was a lot of emotions. Every emotion that you can feel that day, I felt it. Did they ever have a psychologist or psychiatrist on staff with you guys, or like a therapist? They, baby, and and I don't know how many times they they figured out a way to ask you, "Do you want to kill yourself?" They definitely did. Like that, I'm like, so they ask you like a thousand different ways, or do you plan on committing suicide? They did have a psychologist. They definitely mm -hmm. did. Um, we had to take these little tests or something. Like we had to like fill out stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember us being in a room and filling out like paperwork where they were asking you questions and doing evaluations and stuff like that. It was a lot. You get eliminated. You get sent back home, right? Like after you mm -hmm. after you get eliminated from the show. What does life look like for Malika now? Like she's no longer making the band. She's no longer on MTV. She's now back in her life. Okay, your, your camera had um, cut. So when I went back home, it was just like nobody knew for a long time because it hadn't hit the air yet. And I mm -hmm. just, at that point, I just started grinding, like doing hella stuff, the recording, you know, putting out music, hosting, appearing, doing all just kind of stuff. And at that moment, my daughter, honestly, it was weird because she could not understand why we wasn't rich. Because at her age, whenever we go out, people are trying to take pictures with me. And it's just like you're being treated like a celebrity, but we still don't have a big pool. We're not 
we're not living like the Kardashians is what she said. And I never forget her like asking me that. And it was and, and you you hear a lot of celebrities say this too, where it's just like all the fame and the popularity was there, but the bank account wasn't added up because it was a reality show. So I had to just hustle and grind and do what I had to do. And then it was at that point that I decided to go back to school. And I really did it mainly for my daughter, like to show her like, mm -hmm. okay, this didn't work out, but check this out. And I mean, I zipped through it, like praise God, I zipped through it, I got my degree. I sent you some of the stuff. I have like a, a program mm -hmm. that's in my name at the school that I went to. I ended up getting two AA degrees. I got a degree in psychology. I was able to travel abroad. I started doing um, documentary and filmmaking. I had one of the first podcasts ever, um, like first 50 podcasts ever. People were like, what? Watching TV on the phone was like insane. Um, it was called The Hyphy Show. Like if you Google The Hyphy Show, I interviewed everybody. Um, and just living my life, having fun, traveling. Um, I, my, I went back to doing hair. I went back to my modeling agency and started doing like voiceovers. And um, I have a, a Levi's or all the curvy size Levi's are still made in my measurements. So oh, they wow. My um, body. I have a mannequin that was created at, after me in my likeness. So I, I'm a fit model for Levi's. Um I've done a lot of little independent films and things like that. I did a workout DVD. You know, after I lost all of that weight, everybody wants to know what I did. So I made a workout DVD. And um, just traveling a lot. I have my nonprofit. So I go back and forth to Africa and do a lot of charity work in Africa. I, I just bought that. some property there. Um, oh, you popping. I mean, you know, I, I have been really, I like, I have no complaints about life. I'm having an amazing time. I moved from Oakland to New Orleans, which was insane. Like, I never would have thought that I would have done that. But I did. And I got into the vacation travel industry in one month. Like, so thankful for that. I became, like, the top marketer in New Orleans. And they made me the trainer. And, I mean, those checks were those, those were the checks that I thought I was going to get from PD. And that I've been doing ever since. So, like, I have tons of awards, and it's just been fun because I literally get paid to travel and give people free vacations, and I can still do my music. And where I'm at now with the music, I don't make music to hope that, you know, it would be nice to sell a million records, don't get me wrong, but I make what's ever on my heart. I make what's good for me. I'll, I'll shoot my videos for it, and God willing, people love it. If they don't, I did. You know what I mean? Like, I love that. I'm doing it for me right now. I'm not doing it, like, to try to make it. In my mind, I'm not, like, trying to make it. I'm just doing what I love to do. Living life and loving life is my hashtag right now. Um, I feel like I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Is Malika happy? I am happy. The only part in my life that I'm not happy about is my love life. Like, I'm such a love bug. I'm such a love bug <clears throat> and my love life is not where I want it to be right now. You know, I moved to New Orleans for um, like, if you see this, are you my husband? I'm just like, what's going on? I mean, fought for this guy. He's from Africa. We got married and he pretty much, for lack of better terms, just like ghosted me and he got deported, yada, 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 speed it up to now. I've done everything that I could do. Um, Baby, listen, that lady that's sitting on TikTok telling her 50-part story, you heard about her? Mm-hmm. Risa Tisa, ain't it? Girl, I, I don't know her name, but I've got a 50-part story that if she, if I knew it was going to do that. So it's a lot of twists and turns, but I am happy because I'm I'm traveling. I be, If I'm not in New Orleans, I have a, a, a loft. I have my store, Africa Love Store, um, that I have a business partner. The original store is in Vegas. We have Africa Love Store here in New Orleans where we sell African gifts and decor. But then we also is New Orleans. So we're always performing in the store. My dad is singing. We're, we're having a good time. You know what I mean? And everybody's eating. Everybody's traveling. Everybody's, you know, getting money to a certain extent. It's not all about money, but we're financially comfortable and stable and just having a good time. And when I'm not at home in New Orleans, I'm pretty much living at a resort. I live on vacation. So I'm I'm just having fun. 
Now, y'all, I need a good man. I need a good husband. I'm ready to be a good wife to whoever's ready to accept all this greatness that I've been giving out to these people that don't appreciate it. I love that. No, girl, I'm in the same boat. I would love to get, I would love to have a husband too. I would. That would be really amazing. But, yeah. you know, I just have to wait. I mean, you know, we just, we just have Malika, we just have to wait, child. We just gotta wait. Just being patient. That's the only thing, because I'm such a helper and a lover and a, you know, there for you type of girl, and so mm -hmm. it's just like I'm doing all these amazing things, and I just feel like I need my soulmate. I need my my person with me, and I've had some great relationships. So if I never had a, you know, another husband, then I would just have to just sit back and reminisce in my rocking chair about the good old days, because I had some good old days. <laughs> And so, looking back on it, right, we see all of these stories the people who actually made the band have shared, right? And we've seen it on TV, and we've heard the stories um, that have happened after the television cameras went off about, you know, them not having money, drama, beef. Do you think it worked out better that you did not make the band? I will say no. Mm -mm, not for me. Because... Even though I just said all that I just said, no matter what, if you've put all that time and energy into your music and what I've done already, that's just the point that I'm at. There's no way that I would not have wanted to say that I did a world tour, that I sold a million records. Like, mm. because I'm me. I would have been me no matter what. You know what I mean? Like, all of this mm. shit that they be saying, I'm like, I am still have always been Malika, which might be a reason why, because I'm not one of the people that was willing to twist and turn, twist and turn to get to the top. Mm -hmm. But no, nah, I... I wish I would have made the damn band. I'm not about the front be like people be like, you dodged a bullet, mm -mm, baby. I wanted to go on a world tour and make sell a million records. Yes, I did. No because matter what, because everything you're doing, you still would have done it. Right, and the th and I'm not those people. You know what I'm saying? Like, what your story is is not my story. It's just not like I don't move like that. You know what I mean? Like I was raised with a certain mentality, and it's just I feel like you never know when you not in that position, but at the same time, I just feel like the person that I am, I still would have made the best of whatever the situation was. So when people say you feel like you, you know, with everything that's going on, do you feel like you dodged the bullet? No, I want to make the band. I wanted to um, go on a world tour. I wanted to have a, a nice ass music video, like, you know, all the stuff that they did. I definitely would have wanted to do that. I put in the work to, to do that, but God is the best planner. So maybe it, it, it still might happen. You don't know. Shit, right. Moms still be still here, happen. baby. It ain't no telling what, what can happen. I still believe and still have faith, but I'm not moving like, pick me. I'm like, you like it? Oh, girl, I went to the studio. This is my jam. I'll be listening to it, and I'll put it on iTunes, and hopefully I'll like it. Yes. I love that. I love that attitude. Yeah. Did you ever see Diddy after your time on Making the Man? No, I, I never did. You never I saw never him saw, again. I never saw him again. I never saw him again. Now, at one point, somebody got in touch with my producers. I guess maybe this was around the time when <clears throat> he was coming up with Dirty Money. And maybe they was considering me for that. Nobody never told me what this top secret was. But they were like going back and forth, sending them some of my things, some, sending them my music. But I never knew like the real tea about it. It was just like, I don't know what's going on, but my producers was going back and forth and nothing ever happened. But I would love to see Diddy. Like, I hate that all of this stuff is going on now because even after I didn't make the band, Diddy always had his haters. And any time that people sit me down to talk about Diddy, they desire for me to like talk crazy about him. Like, mm -hmm. how did he, did he make you do the cheat? Like people want, they thrive off of talking negative about him. This has been going on even before any of this stuff happened. Anytime that I did radio interviews or anything, they were like digging for it. I mean, maybe that's just the way of the world. Like people love mess. So I don't know. I pray that, you know, if anybody is a victim that they're healing and yeah. you know that none of this stuff is actually what it is. I don't know. It's just so much to it. And I done an a, a interview about a couple of weeks ago and people were kind of mad about what I said, but I'm like, I've been in the circles where I've seen 
girls throw themselves at a Diddy or a Diddy type, then you want to turn around and cry, whatever. But it wasn't it you that was jumping in his lap with booty shorts on and trying to kick it and do all these things. And then when, when they treat you like a hoe, if you're acting like one, like it's crazy because I see girls do it. So it's hard for me when I hear these stories. And I don't want to take away from somebody that actually did happen. But I know that what I've seen more, I've never seen anybody in my eyes get raped or, you know, this stuff right here. But I have seen girls throw themselves at celebrities and people like Diddy of his stature and do certain things where I'm like, girl, you're doing the most just to do what, you know what I mean? To, to make it, to get a song, to get a studio, to get a date. I've seen that with my own two eyes many times. So I just didn't hope that, you know, I don't know. It's such know a, it's such a sticky situation because of course you have people who, who know Diddy personally, don't know him, that look up to him, that love him, love him for his journey, his music, his business, for whatever reason. And then, you know, you have these people who are coming out saying he's done these things and which places people in a position where it's like, you know, how do you comfortably continue to love somebody or like somebody or support somebody in the midst of all these things that are going on? Um, right. I, God bless anybody who's in that position. I know for, I know for me, someone who's ex experience trauma not on that level but trauma um may justice may justice be served you know yeah, you know like definitely. just may justice be served and i hope that it's my prayer to god that the justice system does a thorough investigation and you know everything gets looked at and the truth the truth prevails and if, if the truth is diddy did this shit lock that nigga up you know and then yeah, yeah, if he did this shit, lock that nigga up. Throw it away but the it's fucking like, key. Remember when Bill Cosby was going through his thing? And I know we kind of get sidetracked. No, it's okay. When those girls started doing their interviews, this is the problem that I have right here. Well, ma'am, why didn't you say anything? Well, I didn't want to jeopardize my career. Okay, so at that point, you chose your career over your integrity. So let's just say Diddy did all these, just say Diddy violated me while I was trying to make the band and I would have made the band and he would have said, I'm doing all this crazy stuff to you, but you're going to make the band. And if I would have said at that point, well, whatever, I'm doing all the crazy stuff that people say because he promised me to make the band. So I chose that. You see what I'm saying? I chose that lifestyle over me saying, excuse me, I'm not doing that. This is what I see. Like, how many times do you do a red carpet, a Met Gala, a um, Gucci shopping spree and be tormented at the same time? At what point do you say, I'm not going to do any of this? Or is it or is it one more Met Gala? Or is it one more shopping spree? Or is it one more, you know, people say, well, victims of the, I just, I don't know. I just, I feel like some people may choose these things when, when you have an option to shut it down. But then the price of fame Might be why I'm in the timeshare business. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. It is. You it get is, what I'm saying, though? I understand your argument. No, I, I really understand your argument. Um, I understand. Yeah. So I what totally if Diddy would have violated me and told me, you're going to make the band? And, and this interview was going in a whole other direction. I'm like, well, he, he raped me. He did all of these things. And he told me I was going to make the band. Yeah, but I chose to make the band. That was the compromise. I knew what I was doing just like he knew what he was doing. That's how I feel. Now, anything else, I don't know because I've seen it with my own two eyes. And I'm not just talking about Diddy. So... And see, and this is why I just pray to the Lord every day. And I say, Lord, help me do the right thing in all seasons. So I don't even got to worry about, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to yeah. do the right thing in and out of season when somebody looking, when nobody ain't looking. So I don't even have to worry about some, you know what I'm saying? That's true. Let and me that's just do I'm the right shit. Life. I treat people like I want to be treated. I try to do the right thing. Sometimes my nigga ways come back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I <laughs> Sometimes they, they come out. But I'm trying my best to be the best person that I could be. And I can tell you, once I really focus on that, everything works itself out. When you're not constantly trying to get a hookup or, you know, I'm from Oakland. So we stay with a hookup in the back door way to do something, mm -hmm. you know. But the more that I stay on the right path and just doing what I know is right, 
I feel like my life works out better. And I, even though I'm, I don't have, you know, 10,000 hit records and I've done a world tour, my life is still amazing in the way that it is. And for the accomplishments that I have, I'm very proud of myself for the things that I've been able to do in my life. At the, now I'm just like looking back, like I haven't worked really hard at all. And I'm just having a good time rolling I on. Love that. You. You I know? love that. As we wrap this thing on up, how does Malika in 2024 look back on her time on Making the Band, an iconic show in reality TV, as well as a very legendary moment in music? I mean, yes, it was a show, but all of the musical acts that came out of that show went on to do amazing things. You know, millions of records sold, tours, record set um history made and you yeah. you're, you're a part of this entity how do you look back on that i'm very thankful um especially with the the level of fame that reality shows have come to i feel like a lot of these reality shows are just like fighting arguing eyelashes bbls and baby hair you know so i feel very <laughs> <laughs> I feel thankful. I feel very grateful because it, it is a part of an iconic, you know, legendary reality show at the beginning. So I'm I'm thankful for everything. Even though I didn't make the band, I'm really thankful for every experience that I had, the people that I was able to work with, Lorianne, Doc, you know, Johnny Wright, even Phil. Um, and let's not forget about um, oh my God, his name is slipping my mind. He passed. Andre Jason. Rick Oh my God! How can we forget about Andre? Listen, oh, oh my God! I'm so going. Be, I'm so mad at myself right now. How can I forget about Andre fucking Harrell? Legendary, legendary. And he I, was the he was the nicest, the most kind. I had his personal cell phone number anytime I needed to talk. He was like, just so sweet and sincere. And listen. He worked with the best of the best, Mary J. Blige, Jodeci. He was a part of all of that. And just think that he was like literally the most, to me, kind, sincere, humble, there for me, um, Andre Harrell. So may God be pleased with him. I wanted to meet Andre Harrell. When I when I heard that he passed, I was so sad because I wanted to meet him. Like, I just wanted yeah, to shake his I hand. I always would call just to make sure his cell phone number was right. I said, because if I've got... My direct line on Andre Harrell, whenever I need to hit up Diddy, is Andre Harrell. And now, when he passed, I was like, <sighs> Andre. Yeah. Ooh, Andre. Um, If you were in front of Diddy right now, what would you say to him? Did you do all that shit? <laughs> <laughs> Diddy. No. I mean, now... I'd be like, bro, I've been out here having your back on this interview. Yeah, say it ain't so. I don't know. Because, I mean, like, the same thing. I looked up to him, like, to know that I was going to be on his show, like, Diddy. That's Diddy. But if all of this stuff is true, it's like, how do I still love you? How do I still look up to you? How do I, how am I proud for this moment if it's all true? You, you know what I'm doing saying? This shit. How am I so proud? Like, making a band. It's something that I've been proud to do and be a part of. And like the things that Diddy said about me on camera, like to be able to play that back. And and I just, I probably write today, I would be like, say it ain't so. Diddy, I guess that's that. I, that's the first thing I could think of. Cause I'm just trying to figure out. Cause I'll be, I'll be having your back, bro. But please say it ain't so. Diddy, Diddy be denying all this shit though. He be saying it wasn't me. Everybody's coming out the woodworks. Baby. Everybody's coming out the fucking woodworks, man. Everybody's coming out saying a thing or three. And wait, hold on. What about CBJ? What did they say about CBJ? I missed that. The child they said CBJ was in the video with the people having having um I think homosexual activities. I could see you know you know the people been saying for years Diddy was gay. That had been a going around a long time. And I just was like, my thing was, if he was, so what? What does that mean? Why were they, was it because he was saying he wasn't? 
I never heard him say he wasn't. You better say, did he ever say he wasn't? He never said he wasn't, but he always portrayed himself like he's with a woman, though. Like he's so. with a woman. Yeah. Baby, little Miss Carisha ain't been saying nothing about Diddy lately, baby. I don't, I don't think nobody over there want to say anything about Diddy because Diddy, Diddy got the block hot. The block is hot. But is there anything you want the people to know about Malika in 2024 that they can go look or check out or stream? I would love for everybody to just follow my Instagram page because unfortunately when making the band was out, there was no Instagram. Because if it was, I probably would have had all these followers and stuff. So like I don't really superly push my page. I would love for people to just follow me. I have a lot of amazing projects that I've done and also that I'm working on now. Um, I have a store in New Orleans called Africa Love Store where you can buy African gifts and decor. We've been taking, so my business partner, he's taken people for years now where we take groups to Africa. I would love for, you know, even you, like some of my people to come and let's go to Africa together. Um, I'm shooting out there. I'm going to do like, um, I'm working on, I'm working on some projects in Africa with, related to film. So I will say that and just going out in Africa, just in, in exploring, but follow my page. Um, I do have music on Apple, uh, iTunes and everything. Download my music, slap my music. I, um, you, the proceeds that, that I get from my song, African Girl, I'm using that to go back. We do restoration on schools. We build a water well in Pekin. Um, we clean up like when they have big events in the, the city of Dakar. Um, so that's kind of been a lot of what I've been working on now. My daughter and I are launching our own um, Instagram travel page, mother and daughter, just like reality style. So I, I would that. say right now, just just. Follow me and, and keep up with me so then you can see all the new and latest things that I'm up to now. I love that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Malika. It has been a pleasure spending this time with you. I, mean, I know. I feel like you're my, my BFF right now. With the yes. No, yes. Follow my YouTube page. Tell people to follow my YouTube page. Yes. Videos and stuff on my YouTube page. Yes. And I'll link all that stuff down below um, where yeah. people can just look down and um, Yes. I would click. love that. Just follow me on social media. Yes, no, it has really been an honor sharing this space with you. Um, a, a large part of me is still like six, seven, eight, nine, um, coming home, watching all these reality TV shows, seeing all these people like chase their dreams, and a lot of you guys' stories and um experiences motivated me to chase yeah. after my own dreams. And so sharing this space with you, talking to you, hearing about your story and what went on on Making the Band is really a gift and an honor for me. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. When's your birthday? February 10th. I am an Aquarius, Gemini, Gemini. Okay, so you just had a birthday. I just had a well, birthday. thank you so much for having me. Um, I still... I'm appreciative of people that even want to sit down and chop it up with me. I, you see, I can run my mouth for a long time. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm very thankful. I just was, I want to tell anybody, whatever you're doing, stay true to yourself. Like, stay true to yourself, whatever that may be. Stay true to that. Don't let yeah. people persuade who you are to get to the next level. If you don't want to bend over and let that coochie breathe, don't do it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. be yourself at all be times. Yourself. You know, yeah. And just live like, live life, love life. That's it. Have a good time. I love going to the beach. If you watch my page, I'm always at the beach. I'm always traveling, just enjoying the regular things in life that are amazing to me. Yeah. I love traveling. So you guys are all invited to come with me to Africa. Let's bring in the New Year in Senegal. Yes, let's bring in the New Year in Africa. Yes, come <laughs> on, let's do it. Yes. Thank you so much, Malika, for joining us. Until next time, girl, okay? Yes, for sure. Thank you. Oh my God, that was so freaking amazing. Uh, Malika, once again, thank you so much for stopping by in the mix and sharing your story. Guys, get down below in the description box and check out all of Malika's links as they are provided down below jump down in the comment section and let me know what you thought about this chat listen we're gonna be talking about making the band y'all okay i didn't i didn't got crook up in here and i'm enjoying what i'm getting i love you guys so much i love you guys so much for supporting love you guys so much for watching be sure to like comment subscribe and share and until next time my friends be sure to what parade and giggle bye, bye. 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 bye.